children to take a trip, to cop out, to groove. The psychedelic jackets on the record albums have their own Some call it marijuana, some call it sense media, some call it lamb's bread, and some people call it... Welcome to another edition of the Adam Dunn Show. I'm your host, Adam Dunn. And I'm your co-host, Mitch Janasa. And we're joined here by Mr. Bicycle himself. Hey. And the kid. And the kid. Nope. Can't do our sock puppet thing, dude. No, sock puppets actually late, crashed the entire system. Today because Something must have just been yeah, yeah. encoded differently. We crashed so. the entire system with our sock puppet attempt today. So we're late. You get less of this this we're introductory prattle. Right to news, news, news. That's it. I think we got it, dude. You want to talk about your week? Anything big? Yeah, we can we can we can cut a few news stories out and still do a quicker okay. quicker. Okay. Well, we had, we, we had to do that we're anyway. We got someone we're calling in ten minutes. Did I have a good week? Yeah, I had a good. Well, it was rainy week, so it was kind of one of those like homey. But down at Aces, I went down to the farm, so it was good. It's only half over. Yeah. The rain? The week? No. <laughs> Is the rain going to stop here? It was weird because it's like. Yesterday, uh, Latronica was. He walked in the room. He goes, "What is it? They legalize weed here, and now we live in Amsterdam, or what the fuck?" It's like it's just rain, 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 rain. I was like, "I yeah. like it." May is the wettest month. The, it's all it's the clouds we put up. Yeah, we smoke weed. It's all just those clouds. It's coming back. It they don't make it past. That's the not how we are so works. Sen- we're so I sensitive. That's exactly to wait, chemtrails? Is it chemtrails? Chem what? Chemtrails? I don't know about those things. That's You're the guy, the expert on chem, I heard. Uh, sure. So. Uh, just we're just so you follow Cam around. It's like Cam trails. That's a Cam trail. Yeah, yeah, when he's on acid groupies. or something. Cam seeing trails. We're so used to the the goddamn sunlight that when it's dark and cloudy for two days straight, we cry. It's gr- and then we do shows that are about bad news and stressful things. Oh yeah, because like we're all today. stressed out now. Yup. Pure stress. So <laughs> <laughs> look at us. I mean, we're kid, just, you had a rough week, huh? Yeah. Sorry yeah, for your losses. Well, I mean, no, all your friends got. Yeah, sorry to hear about. Taken down or what? One hundred and seventy arrested. No. Yeah, they did. 170 kid, kids, kid got promoted to vice president of his own club. Yeah, because of all the arrests. <laughs> oh yeah, he pushed you right up. <laughs> but yeah, I guess uh, the uh, that's just crazy, man. 170 arrested, each one of them on a million dollars bail. So that's 170 million dollars worth of bail mm-hmm. for. Well, yeah. So, so, they so, so we come up charge. with 17 million. That's not some brilliant good. math. It's a lot. I mentioned a lot of people. Just saying. But no, busy week. I almost had a throw down at the dog park. Oh yeah, I want to hear that story. Dude. I had to leave work to go do this shit. To go so, fight at the dog park. So, okay, so, 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 so Kilo is not fixed yet because he's not nine months. He's just about to be nine months, and they say that it's not good to fix him before nine months. It could stunt their growth. Kilo's a dog. So, yes, Kilo is a dog. So fixing um, weed. Uh, maybe a month or so back, um, we were at the dog park with him, and I remember this one guy getting very upset because his dog was aggressive and Kilo wasn't fixed. He's like, your fucking dog's not fixed, blah, 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 blah. But he left, so I just let it go. I wasn't going to start any issues. And uh, I think it was maybe Monday or Tuesday of this week, I got a phone call and it was from Brittany and she was pretty much in tears. She was like, there's this this guy harassing me at the dog park. He was in my face, cursing at me, screaming at me. Um, I could hear people on the phone with her, like asking her if she's okay and this and that. And, and I'm you like, said What's this guy on? was some kind of biker, right? Well, no, he was definitely a wannabe biker with his handlebar mustache. You can recognize his those guys. Davis and huh? T-shirt. And he, he was a loser. You've got that. You've got that wannabe but, biker uh, radar going. Yeah, on. yeah, that must be it. <laughs> but, but no, I guess he, uh, <laughs> his dog was being too rough with Kilo, and and Kilo was being rough back, and he started getting in Britt's face and and screaming at her and telling her to get the fuck out of here. She has no right to be here. He's gonna kick the dog and this shit and that shit. So I walked over and he was sitting with his wife. I left work, came went down the street to the dog park and he was sitting there with his wife and I said, hey, you know, we should go talk over here away from the, the women. Let's go have a conversation over here. He goes, oh no, I'm okay. I said, all right, well, I'm going to talk to you right fucking here. If I ever find out again that you're, you know, sitting here cursing at women and have to have people coming up to my girlfriend asking her if she's okay over a dog because, well, your fucking dog's not fixed. I'm like, hey, who the fuck are you to tell me whether my dog needs to be fixed or not? I'm allowed to in this park. I'm like, you don't fucking own the park, dude. Fuck you, suck a dick, and if I ever catch you talking like that again, I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. I can't stand that shit. Big kid, big kid. I just don't get it. If you're a 64 year old man, shouldn't you know better that? How do you know he's 64? Because I was, he was older, and I was like, what are you 50? (laughs) Don't you know better? And he's like, I'm actually 64. Thank you very much. I'm like, well then you should definitely know better. She's 25 years old, and you were literally in her face screaming at her, making her cry in front of all these people. 
You should fucking. He basically know pussied out instead of kicking his ass. Well, yeah, I pussied yeah, out. Why I, didn't, I didn't hit why him. Stab him. Thank in the you for face. taking him that biker. Yeah. Yeah. Biker. No, I didn't. Uh, the the, 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 the dog the park face. is right next to the police department, so I don't think I would have made I'm it very surprised, far. I'm surprised all your crew didn't come up and just fucking crew, back you dude. up, back you up on that one. That no, would have been it was a serious backup though. required. I hate that. Six they were they were busy. Bullshit. They were busy. They were tied up. They were, they were down in Texas, up. mopping handling, shit up, handling the biz. So, aside from that, Matthew Riot just made a good point that we have totally overlooked, and I can't believe it. What is up with the man bun, kid? Oh, it's oh. just my hair gets so long, so I, oh, I, yeah. we, if I don't do we, it... We're not overlooking it. If, just, I, don't, <laughs> yeah, if I don't actually do it... It's too much. Yeah, yeah, it's too much. Yeah, because what happens here? Yeah, because if I don't do my hair, it kind of just fucking flops all over the place. He gets the Hitler. Well, now what so, do you do? He looks like Hitler? And it's not a bun. What, it's not a bun. I don't have it like What is bun. the do in your hair part? Uh, what, what do you mean? Do, if what, I don't put like gel in it and, oh. and grease it back, you know what I mean? It gel doesn't it grease fucking, back. Yeah, just because I do my hair, look at you. Woke up fresh out of bed, like poof. I, don't, I, I am fresh out of bed. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's literally fresh. And out. this guy doesn't have any hair, so he doesn't have to worry no. about doing his hair in the morning. No. And bike's hair, sure, it just it just does its own thing. So bike's got perfect hair. Oh, I'm going, I'm going know, bald, but I would never grow a man bun or a little ponyette tail. <laughs> My little pony my little tail. ponytail, my first little ponytail. <laughs> my first little the news, ponytail. news, news, quick, 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 quick. quick. What, if I did, what? I would curl it maybe or crimp it. New York Post: Narcotics cops ordered to stop arresting suspects over forty. Nice. Adam is safe in New York. <laughs> And, and just go, in I general, I, it's what it looks <laughs> like here. The city's hey, narcotics come here. I'm going to slap some people around. Are being told to stop arresting suspects over the age of forty. A major strategy shift designed to target younger dealers who are most who are more likely to carry guns and use them. The post has learned that's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, it's pretty stupid, but it's, it's also like a setup. Uh, so it's like a whole bunch of old guys. Just a previous discussion life. has been the need to target violent offenders who are 18 to 40 years of age. It has been well established that the individuals in this age demographic are responsible for the majority of violent crime. Those so bastards. if you're just selling drugs and you're not responsible for violence and you're over 40... You're pretty safe. You're pretty safe. Nice. And you can carry two ounces now? So can I do this over Skype from New York in a few years? I'm not, I'm sure. not over 40 sure. yet. Yeah, you got a few news, years news, news. Uh, so weed etiquette. The Emily Post Institute talks social graces. Do you, do you guys do you guys know the Emily Post Institute? Is? I don't. Do you know who Emily Post was? Maybe no, no. It's like mm. manners, like etiquette. Oh yeah, think. that crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're talking about weed. The unspoken rules of the puff puff pass ritual, including all the steps it takes to toke what? up. What did they contact are you? Are obvious to those who already partake, but. But for those just now starting to explore the world of weed, there's a lot to learn. Unlike many trends and businesses that are emerging with legal marijuana, it might come as a surprise that etiquette has always been something that has had its place in smoking culture. Uh, this is from the cannabis, so they toot their own horn a little. But uh, it turns out that the Emily Post Institute, the definitive source on etiquette in the United States and beyond, was talking about how a host should handle marijuana as early as 1982. Look at that. The story's in the cannabis. You can read it. They keep they keep talking about it. And now, there's nothing we don't know, but uh, in the 19th edition, they have exclusive... Oh, sorry. They're considering it for the 19th edition. Until then, the Post has ex- uh, Emily Post has exclusively shared with the cannabis these five starter tips for the best pot practices as a party. There you go. Best All right, five ready? Okay, ready? Top, thumbs, top. Up, thumb, thumms have, up, thumbs up, thumbs down. Hold on. Can I just sigh intro? in advance? Yes. Uh, yeah, it's going to be bad. That, that was like maybe <laughs> a, Adam groaned, bike side. Uh, One, go ahead, go ahead. host hostess gift. Do you know for sure that your host smokes pot? If they do, it's appropriate to bring as a gift. Remember, since it's a gift, your host doesn't have to smoke it with you, or even that night. A small glass jar or a pre rolled joint or two makes for a classic presentation. That's okay. That's I, okay. I think it's okay, but nobody I don't. I don't. It. Nobody does. Yeah, it. I don't see it as a requirement. That if you're going to a like party, a long-winded way to well, say, no, no. "Here's a joint." Yeah, yeah you this, bring your own herb, but you don't have to bring someone. I think else this is like a dinner party. party. Like someplace, you might bring a bottle this of wine. Like, They're saying okay. it's okay to show okay. up with a jar of weed. I'm with right. that. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think it's appropriate, but I don't think okay. it's a necessity. Know your audience. Is your new boss on the guest list? Is it dinner with your best friends? Whether as a guest or as a host, always be sure to ask permission and where your host would prefer you to smoke. Just as you would with a cigarette. Yeah, agreed. 
Agreed? No. Well, you light it up wherever. What do you think, Dunn? Uh, wherever. Depends who the host is. Well, you know, it depends. Yeah, you have we're to going to them. Adam's house, we're just lighting up anywhere. Yeah. Going to your house, lighting up anywhere. Yeah, right Pretty in the turn's face. <laughs> oh, you, you, you were there for dinner. <laughs> right in the kid's face. No, Point three that. to the kid, bring your own stash, just like with alcohol. Yeah. Unless it's a gift, feel free to take your pot and glass with you when you leave. I hope so. Nothing worse than the guy that shows up with no weed asking you for and weed. And then comes away with a glass. And then leaves with a jar. Yeah. <laughs> There's the, the opposite etiquette. Next one, chef's choice. Unlike wine, pot rarely messes up a menu, but never feel obligated to include it as part of the meal or even the entire evening if it's presented. I don't know what that means. I, that's, I missed it. Oh, what? That was a long... That's Number long five. Too long, too long. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Got it before the end Spelled of the out with periods. What is it? Oh, R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Oh, my God. Acronym. What do we got? What's an acronym for? Be respectful of those who don't smoke. Remember that even if the host is comfortable with it, some other guests might not be as pro pot. So keep it casual and try not to let smoking turn into the main event for the night. As Mitch is reading these... Sighing is... Thinking, no, out. think in your mind to pretend... He's talking about alcohol. Imagine if, if alcohol is the issue here. I'm offended by someone having a glass of wine in the room as opposed to someone. I'm offended by someone smoking weed in the room. Well, it's glass of wine, it's not like it, it doesn't get in the air. I don't care. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, while it may turn out that only a couple of you smoke, your offer should be to all guests at the party. Just the same way you wouldn't serve wine or dessert to only a couple of guests, you should make sure there's enough pot for everyone to join in. Always be inclusive. Sneaking off to smoke with just one or two other guests is not appropriate. <laughs> Sketchy. So, what are you guys doing? <laughs> you pretend you're doing something else. Uh, we'll do one more news, I guess. We won't do that one. That's bad news. Uh, we got enough bad news. Oh, this one. I'll do this one. So here's the thing, though. Bike, I feel like you're a living proof to the contrary of this story. Smoked marijuana as a teen, you could have been taller. Oh, Ever no. wished you were a bit taller? Bike was supposed to be eight feet tall. <laughs> you wish, guess what? Wish you were a baller? Did you ever wish you were a baller? How about four inches taller? If you smoked marijuana as a prepubescent boy, that wish may not have come true. Researchers no. at a university in Pakistan studied levels of hormones linked to growth and puberty in the blood of 217 boys addicted to marijuana addicted. and 220 who didn't smoke at all. Unfortunately, it's probably some truth to that because I was, I was 18 the first time I smoked so, Ooh. so you didn't get hit with it. I no, didn't get no hit with pre, it either. No prepubescent smoke. Yeah, yeah. No, so I could have yeah. been like six. Four. How many yeah, kids? Dude, you could have been huge, man. You started smoking when you were like seven. No. Seven. Uh, it was eleven. Eleven. I remember. That's but prepuberty. Still. Yeah. Well, I mean, I can't speak for you. I don't know. No, yeah, it was definitely, definitely pre. Definitely so. prepubescent at eleven. I would hope. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I can't imagine being addicted to marijuana yeah, yeah, at that are. age. Look at, look at you. At, at that, that, that age. age. You know, kids are starting to go through puberty now. Like at like eight. Isn't yeah, that crazy? It's because of the milk, man. It's you fucking wild, dude. Well, it's more than that, but... All right, one more news. I got this one. You guys eat. Yep. On Hit me, kid. Oakland Airport baggage handlers accused of smuggling marijuana. Bike, I know you're liking that. You're biking that. You can already that. carry eight, eight, up to eight ounces with you in Oakland. Oh, they're smuggling. Almost a dozen Bay Area residents, including three who worked as baggage handlers for Southwest Airlines at Oakland International Airport, have been charged in a conspiracy to use the handler's special security access to ship marijuana throughout the United States, federal, federal prosecutors announced Monday. No Fourteen way. defendants were charged with conspiracy to distribute and possession with intent to distribute 100 kilos or more of marijuana, according to the DOJ. The baggage handlers use their ability to avoid security checkpoints and have packages shipped through airline cargo to smuggle the marijuana, according to a 67-page affidavit submitted by prosecutors. At least one of the co-conspirators posted photos of large bundles of cash and marijuana on his Instagram account. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> According to the affidavit submitted by FBI agent Richard Douchebag, the conspiracy was operating as <laughs> early as... What's his real name? Richard Douche... Douche... Douche bottle. Douche, douche, douche bottle. Douche, douchebag. No, this is douchebag. <laughs> okay. The conspiracy Richard was operating douchebag. as early as July 2012 through March of this year. Law enforcement agents made repeated arrests and seizures at airports across the country beginning in May 2013 as they investigated the drug sales ring. Douchebag. Yeah, it's definitely douchebag. Well, you expect that to happen, wouldn't you? I mean, What's that? 
Sure, sure you just assume that because it's on the airport. I mean, they use their security badges <laughs> to cross security barriers while carrying duffel bags filled with marijuana, of course. They said the handlers would then use secured doors to enter the terminals and hand off the baggage to co-conspirators who had booked, fl- booked travel on flights to major cities and had already cleared security screenings at the Oakland airport. Those accused of ferrying the marijuana across lines good include move. these. So good. I always wonder that. Too. I'm always like, that's like the missing. That, that, that's that's like the missing link. Well, the, well, the, the handoff. The weak link is that is that fucking when you get to when you have a chance to put your shit underneath at the last second. That's the moment right there because there's guys coming in and going out. Oh, yeah. is, it, is this your bag here? And the guy's like retarded and he brings your bag down and he comes back up and you could pretty much at that moment if you had anybody going the handoff. That's it. That's like. Psh- Handy dandy. That guy, if he came to the bottom, I've seen guys, I'm sure. They got you see them, yeah, yeah. They came to the bottom of the stairs and somebody else handed them a thing. They wouldn't give a fuck. They'd be like, put that shit on there. Yeah, you dropped something. You know, it's like, it's, yeah, it's definitely the moment. All right. I'm always looking for the weak link. The weak link. <laughs> so the next one, this is going to be our segue. I'm going to, oh, my phone's dead. I can't line up our guests. That's going to be fucking hard. Mm-hmm. Facebook? What do, you, what do you have? Is this? Facebook? This yeah, four iPhone 4. We don't have a 4. No, I guess not. I just ordered one on eBay last night. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I got one more news, news, news. Hit me. Hold on. Uh, give me two seconds. I'm checking for a charger. Oh Can my you hit God. news first and I, check I, on I the news story? I did bring a charger for you, but it's in the car. Ah. So, sorry. Uh, news, news, go get news, it when you get news, pizza. News, 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 This is the one that bike sent me. It's about the organ donor wait list. And I'm waiting for it to load. Organ donor wait list in... Calif- organ donor waitlist patients can test positive for cannabis right in California. Yes, pick them up. Welcome to the Adam Dunn Show. It's about the organ donor waitlist. Oh, you sh- can you turn the show down in the background, please? Hello? Hello? Yo, can you turn the show down in the background? Yes, pick them up. Oh, we got you, I think. We're better now. Oh, no. Now we're in a time warp. Turn the show down in the background, please. Yeah, <laughs> right on. Oh, he hung up. He so hung that up. Explains it. That's not the answer. Nine two five was whoever. That I don't was. know. My phone's dead, man. We are expecting calls on calls on calls. Call back and turn your radio down or whatever instrument of amplification that you happen to be using. <laughs> So it's the most confusing thing about talking about people about the show is because you know, always slip the word radio in there because you think radio and then everyone goes, oh, oh what, what, what station? On. And then you're like, oh, no, internet radio. And then their, their whole demeanor drops to like, like oh, everyone oh, has internet I radio yeah. right now. <laughs> <laughs> what it's, and you're like, yeah, I know. Yeah, they do say that. It's not. That, that is what they say, right? Pretty much. What do they tell you, Blake? I'm a douche nozzle. What you're doing isn't that great. I could do it. <laughs> exactly. There you go. You're like, thanks. Yeah. That, hey, why aren't you doing it? They never do it, though, right? No, no, no. Not weekly. Can we try it again, kid? Welcome to the Adam Dunn Show. Hello. You're live on the air. We can't hear you, though, and I don't think we have you muted. Someone fell asleep. Kid, did you not do something like last week? No, don't blame the kid. I'm pretty sure I the mean, kid's on top shit of runs it. Downhill. <laughs> See, <laughs> no one's blaming you, Mike. <laughs> I'm pretty tall, dude. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, uh, nothing. Is this back? Hello, there. You, hello, caller. Guy stepped hello. Up. Hey, yeah, welcome. Uh, we go. got you. How you doing, guys? Hey, what's going on, man? You're live. So, uh, what's uppers? Ready what? to talk about what happened in Vegas? Oh, you better believe it. So I didn't even get to line it up. Yeah, we have all bad news show today, so we're definitely talking about what went down in Vegas. I'm not going to even line it up with a news story. Tell it, tell it to us how it went down to you chronologically, and we'll sit here and smoke and make snarky comments okay, and so, eat pizza. Uh, you know, uh, we showed up on Vegas. Um, oh, introduce five. yourself we first. To, we have to introduce yeah, our yeah, caller. Yeah, Nobody yeah, knows yeah, who yeah. we're oh, speaking yeah. to. Yeah, say your um, name. Say Chris w- with MCS. Uh, collective out of San Francisco and Davenport Extracts. Right on, <laughs> and so and Chris, you have some background with uh, with the HempCon folks, correct? Correct. Um, I help them, you know, organize the competition side. Um, me being a competitor in the scene, you know, I saw some faults in different, you know, competitions, and I wanted to make this competition as plain and simple and easy for people to read and not get fucked. Um, better word for it. Um, you know, I. So they came to me about two years ago, and I've been helping with that. Um, 
this time around, um, I actually wanted to be a competitor. Um, so we let uh, another collective in Las Vegas, uh, Red Dragon Brothers, do our intake um, so we could be legal in the state of Nevada. Um, we did our intake uh, two weeks ago. Um, then uh, HEPCON contacted everybody to let them know, hey, we got off the phone with, um, you know, the sheriff's department and um, the general manager for the event, letting them know, hey, you guys cannot vend or show any product at the show. Um, now, you know, now can I ask got, you where you... the memo and understood what was going on. Did you, can uh, you go over the details of that call? Were you on that call or you heard it secondhand? I, I, I heard it secondhand um, through the management. Um, you know, I, I work very, very closely with them. So I, I know exactly what's going on at all times. Um, and I work with the vendors very closely, um, you know, so I, know, I could let them know. The contract that everybody signed to go to the show states, big, bold writing, no vending, no show of products to this show. Uh, we do shows all through California, and this was a totally new atmosphere for us. So we wanted to go in there and play the good part. Hey, we can do a cannabis event and listen to your rules. Well, there were some keen individuals that didn't want to partake on the rules. Um, and unfortunately, got themselves arrested. Uh, so on Friday, everybody sh uh, came in to do their load up and set up their booths. Everybody was in a good, you know, good mood. Um, you know, the HEPCON staff went to every booth because they came to our booth and said the exact same thing. There's going to be two Metro P police officers here for your guys' safety. Um, when they're having a, um, a concert or anything like that, they have to have, you know, officers there. They pay the officers to be there to protect the vendors and the crowd. Um, so once that was all taken care of, it was great. Um, on Tuesday, we, we back up a little bit. Uh, on Tuesday, the narcotics officer actually <coughs> called HempCon to let them know, hey, we're, we're taking zero tolerance to this. Um, so, you know, we're going to be coming out. We, we're not going to tell you we're coming out, but we're going to show up. Uh, Friday, they showed up heavy. Um, there was about eight undercover officers from Metro PD and the DEA there. Um, and, it, and it was mind-blowing. Um, these guys are just regular clothes. They went up and bought a ticket like everybody else and walked in. Um, and they were going to booth, to booth, to booth, trying to get people to sell them stuff. Um, so and the first person to be hit was, uh, I believe it was... Uh, infused edibles. Um, they went up to their booth. They had their their booth set up completely with edible line, everything. Officer made a purchase from them, and that's when they were um, arrested. They were the first people to be arrested. And this uh, was on Friday, correct? On Friday, correct. Uh, the second people uh, was a lotion company, um, a lady that had a bunch of CBD lotions, um, CBD lubes, and it was just crazy stuff. Did she get uh, released, or was she actually she charged up, with CBD stuff? Yeah, she had nothing but CBD stuff, but her problem was she sold a THC joint to an undercover agent. Oh, she sold a joint. Okay. Yep. Right. Yeah, that's she right. sold one joint to the undercover agent, and that's what they they ended up raiding her booth and find all the pre-rolls that she had um, underneath her table. Uh, you know, they actually cited her and released her um, on her own reconnaissance. So she did not sit in jail. The only people in jail right now are infused edibles because they p plainly sold a whole bunch to them and they didn't give a shit. Yeah. Um, that was on Friday. Saturday comes around um, thinking everybody got the point. Hey, <laughs> This is not the place to advertise or do that. You're there to, you know, educate people. Um, the education, you know, was hard because how are you going to show your product and how are you going to do that and educate them without your product? So people, you know, started putting for display purposes only on their product. Well, that's still showing your product to their eyes. Um, so we had the, you know, the police come back in. Well, you, and you had told, me, you had told me earlier that when you showed up on Saturday... 
the organizers were aware that there was already a presence forming. Is that correct? Oh, correct. Um, the, on Saturday morning, they were lock and loaded. Um, they had a little substation in the back of the um, convention center <coughs> with a paddy wagon and a, um, a quote-unquote t- testing facility um, so they can take edibles or any products from inside and actually go outside and test it. Wow. Set up like, a, set up like a crime scene, like a crime scene already in process. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They were, no, they were ready they to were do mass crime processing. Scene. It, it was CSI there already to do their work. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like the Dutch then, do their style. It's a very Dutch way of doing it. Like you just roll in and go hot and heavy, and you're like, whoa. And they, and they always send in the scouts first to check out who's boosters, yeah, and, and, who are the hottest ones, you know. And the reason why they did that, because there were so many people selling CBD products there, and quote-unquote, they were just CBD only. So they said, okay, well, we're going to bring our CSI in, and we're going to test it, your quote-unquote CBD products. Yeah. I see. I see. So, th- so they were permitting. I've been theor- doing events for a long years, and I've never seen anything like this. Yeah, no, um, that's definitely, so that's definitely going to ruin that they show. Were, they were all piled up in the back, ready to wait for all the vendors to come in and start going through it. Um, you know, there was, <laughs> these guys were wearing dis- uh, disguises. Uh, we had one DE agent. Well, when you said disguises, was it, you talking like the beard and the fake mustache and the yeah, glasses? Bro, straight up beard. It looked like a drag I mean, these guys are wearing leather jackets and boots and hair all messed up, beards all messed up. Um, the gentleman that we saw prior to that day, uh, um, like the fake DE agent, he came the next day in a wheelchair. Wait, so he had been Wheeling. there one day walking, and the next day he came in a wheelchair? <laughs> with a patch on yeah, his eye. With a patch on his eye. Exactly. Did he have a patch? Did he have a patch? Arr. I can't even yeah, see. No, he came in in a wheelchair with his beanie on, and, and he was going to table to table trying to get samples from everybody. Yeah, because okay. everyone had sympathy and, for the guy who was walking and, around yesterday. All right, so I feel like thing, people are going to get mad at The big thing is that one of the people recognized who he was, and he got on a loud uh, a PA and goes, don't sell into anything to this guy in the wheelchair. He's a cop. He's DEA. So everybody started booing him, and he gets up out of the wheelchair and walks the fuck out. He got up out of the wheelchair and walked out. That's awesome. All all I feel I can say is, does it suck, and is that super lame? Yes. And it fucking blows, but we kind of have to stop. Uh, you know, preaching about making it legal when we want to, and then when shit like this happens, saying, "Oh, this is so fucked up. This is so <coughs> fucked up." Because I mean, it's is that really any more different than a you know LCB agent, like a liquor control board agent, going yeah. to a college place and going to a party and trying to buy a cup at a party with a bunch of underage kids? Like it's it's just as fucked up. But that is what is happening with the legalization. That's what is coming with it. If we want to. Uh, you know, be able to make this a legitimate enterprise and a legitimate business structure, we are going to have to start abiding by those rules. And if you can't abide by the rules that you can't sell an out-of-state or more than a quarter here in Colorado, then you can't abide by those rules and you should be facing just the same punishment as everyone else would because we can't we can't have our cake and eat it too. We have to, you know, <laughs> push it as much as we can. But it does it is a shame to hear. No, but that's chat, funny. Get chat room is yeah. smashing the shit out of you. I don't kids. care what yeah. the chat room no. says. It's, it's, it's the because, truth. Because Ryan the truth. Ryan because that haircut makes his point invalid. Uh, 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 <laughs> that's fine, but it's the truth and everybody can say what they want, but it's it's the absolute truth. I mean if we want legalization yeah, we have to take it truth. we have to take it entirely. We can't sit here and say we want it, and then when something bad happens, be like, oh, well, that sucks. They shouldn't do that. I mean, it's the same Yeah, thing, and you have to be responsible with your actions. Exactly. You know, you were told pr- prior, hey, you guys can't bet. You know, we're a California company. We came there with T-shirts, and that's it. And you know, that fights. That's it's it. Like, it's like kind of the, whenever we go to California to the cups there, we're always amazed, too, because people there are just selling straight-up weed right out of the booth. And, and in Colorado, they're... Definitely, we know that we're under. We know we're under scrutiny. So, any anybody, all the sh- all the people got scared this year. I mean, this year was basically a Cali Cup. Yeah. Like, so, so I want to I want to go back to the story because the sec this wasn't just cops. This is DEA. No, this is this DEA. Is DEA. <laughs> That's why they look like they were in Dragnet and looked stupid. And <laughs> yeah, they have a budget for that shit. <laughs> and they actually spent. They some do. Money. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, the I said video day, of this of the wheelchair. They were looking for the big people and you could tell because they were 
they, they were going to the booth and acting like that was a big piece of red meat in the ocean and sharks just going around it, waiting for them just to slip up. Um, you know, we have a very good video of Cali Finest getting their booth raided because one individual passed the pre-roll to his worker, um, and that was it. Not to somebody else. He took it out of his pocket and gave it to his buddy so his buddy can go out to the vehicle and medicate because there was no medicating that happening at all there. Right. So he would be responsible in going out to his vehicle to do so privately. Um, the DE agents saw that happening, and bam, they all raided their booth uh, with full force. There was probably eight, D, you know, eight Metro, eight, you know, DEA cops there uh, in their booth ransacking it. Um, they had their full display filled with empty packs um, of their pre rolls. So. They start just tearing up that display, ripping up all the packs, trying to see if there was any meds in there. And guess what they found? Nothing. So they destroyed their whole display and found nothing. Yeah, and then they start going onto their personal property, and one guy had a pack in his pocket for his personal use. Um, there was a girl there that had a purse there that had two packs in them for her personal use, and that was it. And they took them off. Um, arresting uh, one of the individuals in there. They actually had uh, mushrooms on them um, and resting for the mushrooms. It's always the mushrooms. Always. Mushrooms. mushrooms are so much fun in Vegas. I can't blame them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> so, uh, you know, and that was the biggest thing. I mean, there was five people, uh, five booths totally raided with ten arrests. Um, and out of all those ten arrests, Half of them are re released on a, re you know, they're all recon, and the other ones are being wait to be bailed out because they, they really broke the rules. I mean, they purposely said, "Hey, here you go." The people that had it on display, they didn't care. They they cited them and, and let them go. So those people got tickets. So, oh. and then Sunday, it was a ghost town. Yeah. Yeah, that's usually what happens. In, in those situations, it's like, are we going back? Fuck that. I mean, like, what's the point? No. Um, and they actually went to all the winners um, and said, hey, we need to get, have you guys come back, and we're going to do a awards assembly in a little room so you guys are not put on the heat. So Hempcon and I, Bud Tender, uh, went to everybody's booth and said, okay, we need you to come back and uh, go to this room. And we're all walking back like, what the hell's going on? We just we have no idea. And uh, they said, okay, we're going to do the awards assembly here. Um, and basically gave us all our awards, whoever won, and uh, we went on our way. Um, and that was at 2 o'clock on Sunday, and they were still strong there. Um, they had probably about, at that point in time on Sunday, 30 cops there. Undercovers. So it was, it was only it cops. It was only cops only walking cops, around. Only people there 30 cops. cops. Walking around an empty thing with kicking cans, basically, like damn. It, exactly, and that's why everybody knew. Okay, these are not, these are not patients. These are not cannabis users. And you know, I I went back there, ripped all my banners, closed the booth, and we were, you know, back to our house. So I'm trying to find the video, the good video. Um. <coughs> damn, sneezing on so the air. So unprofessional. Yeah, I'm trying to find the good video, man, and I uh, I can only find this one kind of terrible one on, that was. Yeah, I have an excellent video of it, and uh, unfortunately, my person that took the video is taking a final for college right now. Oh no! So, well, I'll have a, I'll, I'll send that over to you guys uh, later on today when I like, get it. But it's yeah, we the can put whole it up video the of the Cali Finest getting raided, and you can see them pulling the. the the pre-rolls out of the purse and out of people's pockets, not on displays or under displays, and, you know, it, it's right there in front of you. So they're reaching into people's pockets and, and just... Yeah. So, what? You, I mean, you can't walk around with your own meds in your pocket at that point in time? Right. And wait, can you imagine that happening here, guys? Do you think it would go down? Do you think it's only because of... That's what I'm thinking about the whole time. Tell me, Holly. I'm just trying to imagine it going down here, and I can imagine it being pretty trippy. What does that mean? I mean, I mean, I can see it coming coming out of nowhere. People probably don't expect to be raided while they're at a, a trade show. Pizza guy's well, coming, right? Pizza, pizza guy, it's gonna be a dab or what? Right on. Top pizza guy. And Jetter. And Jetter, nice timing. Follow the pizza. 
the uh, charge for the Alright, so Pizza Guy's gonna take a dab, big glob, right? Pizza Guy. Hold on. Close that door, close that door. Close that door. Close that door. Close that door. Um, do you wanna do you wanna hit? Do you wanna dab or something? You can't, no, cool, it's the tradition, you gotta do it. You gotta do it. You gotta do it. Pizza wow. guy. Oh, pizza guy. Disappointing pizza guy. Come on. Jedder. Pizza guy. At least Jedder's here. At least Jedder's here to clean up the mess. We're one for two. Last pizza guy was cool. Everyone on my, on my post said, like, oh, yeah, like the pizza guy's going to say no in Colorado. Sure. He did. Oh. There you go. We've, we've just beat the odds. Listen, yeah. pizza guy. If you quit smoking to help your career prospects a Don't few <laughs> years ago, I'm going to tell you you're still a pizza <laughs> you guy. You should start wow. smoking. <laughs> yeah, you should definitely not. Boo. Last time and fucking sit here and wait for it to get cold. Yeah, pass yeah, that shit it. out. Pass oh, it out. All right, so uh, Chris, is there anything else you want to say, bud? Yeah, dude. You know, the bottom line of the story is, you know, we every vendor went in there knowing what to deal with. Um, you know, I, I've seen on social media, oh, you know, Hepcon did this, Hepcon did that. You know, Hepcon is conning people. No, we all signed a contract. And I can I can send you over my contract, and, it's, and you can see it in bold writing: no Venny, no showing anything off, no nothing. Everybody signed this contract, and everybody wants to put the blame onto a company that was just actually trying to help your community out there. Stuff. And that was it. And you know, and the biggest thing is it, this goes deeper into why the police were there. Well, the that's... police were there because another venue brought Wait. them there. Another venue. Tell me more about that. Okay, so uh, I'm not afraid to say it because I said it since Friday. Um, Hempfest. Hempfest. Hempfest had their hands in this whole situation. What's Hempfest? Um, we have, uh, like Channel 8 in Las Vegas, did a whole thing on saying about, you know, how Hempfest took pictures of people smoking weed in next to ex cops and giving the pictures to the narcotics squad. Okay. They were there to destroy HempCon's reputation in Las Vegas, um, you know, by contacting the undercovers, um, you know, and working with them prior to their event. So there's more into this story than, you know, than just some DE agents and some cops showing up. There yeah, was that's foul because they never in do Vegas. that. So uh, tell me more about that. That's, some, that's an interesting, surprising angle on this that I want to ride through. Yeah. Um, I mean, when you have the newspapers saying it, and I was saying this on Friday, hey, this is HempCon. I mean, uh, HempFest doing this to us. Um, you know, HempFest doesn't want a bigger company coming in there and taking over right. their quote-unquote. Back up for one second. Fair. You said the newspaper said something about that. Yeah, uh, uh, Channel 8 Las Vegas. They reported that Hemp Fest. HempFest, yes. Yes, you would seen their article, how they were suspicious that Hempfest had no problems with their event, but we go to this event and there's so many problems, and that they took pictures and gave it to the narcs. That's crazy. That is crazy. Well, uh, yeah. anyone who wants to follow up on that story can call in. What do you think, Kate? Yeah, no, we're, we're working on it right now. Sure. Um, we're, we'd actually, I put a phone call in to the reporter from Vegas, and he's going to be getting contact with me. I want to see what he had to say, you know, how he got his information. Um, you know, this was just a total bad event. Um, our intake person that did our intake had extra um, entries that he was supposed to return to the show that we give out to all the people in the show. Uh -huh. You know, the, the patrons, the vendors, they get all these freebies because we have extras. They ended up stealing all of the entries. They being? Red, um, well, I can't put my finger, I can't say Red, Bro Red, Brother, uh, Red Dragon Brothers did it, but they were responsible for our intake. And they didn't take care and of quote, it. And quote, unquote, his buddy, Adam, uh, Capassion Adam, uh, from Capassion Las Vegas, is the one that took all of our entries. Over $10,000 worth of product gone. Wow. So there were so, you a, know, a few fiascos this, in this. Yeah, and those guys are, are connected with, guess who? Hempfest. How connected? Yes. They're very, they're very connected. They're the ones that got the locations for them and did every, you know, everything set up for Las Vegas show for them. Okay. Vegas is so cutthroat. 
They don't fuck around. Yeah, no, they don't fuck around. Yeah, and I found out a week prior to the event that they were, he- you know, set up, and I contacted HempCon and let them know, hey, this guy's a part of HempFest. We need to do something. At that point in time, we couldn't. We were already in contract with him, so we could not pull back. So we said, okay, well, we'll just go on with the show and, and hope for the best. Well, I knew it was coming, and when time was, you know, for us to receive the the extras back to give to the crowd, they were totally gone. Right. And we heard, in a half hour, uh, I heard five different stories from Nate from Red Brothers, uh, from Red Dragon Brothers, five different stories where that product could be. And it never showed so, up. <laughs> but it wasn't where it, supposed to, where it was supposed to be, either way. Yeah, he was supposed to bring it back to the show, and it went from, oh, yeah, I, my brother brought three, or uh, Adam brought three boxes over and gave it to this guy. Well, we brought all our workers that were there, and he couldn't pick out one worker, of the, you know, who he dropped it off to. He goes, oh, it was some other guy. I said, no, this is all the guys, bud. And then it went from, oh, we, did, we just left it by the door. Um... And then I say, well, the funny thing is, you sit here and say three boxes, but we had nine boxes in total. So, you know, you're lying already about how many boxes there were. Uh, because I Bud Tender did a full count before they left intake. So they knew exactly how much medicine was there. And that's so, Vegas. <laughs> it, was, it was just basically Las Vegas people yeah. doing some scantless ass shit. So, all, all the way around. So do we, do we think did the did they give any indication that there is like a, a bigger presence that that you know there's a national agenda or something that's looking you know in terms of the DEA and things like that that are watching we're watching you guys did they slip up like no, that? No, it, it was more like hey we're, we're going to sink Kemp up because we don't want this in in, in our you know in our in our town or so in our state. It was, it was pretty specific to Hempcom. Yeah, oh, for sure. I mean, especially when you have a ham fest out there taking pictures of people smoking against the, the two cops that we hired to watch people, and they were, the two March cops there said, I don't give a shit about you guys. I'm here to make sure nobody does anything crazy. Right. Yeah, and like they, they were fine. They told, hey, you guys want to smoke? You smoke over there. They were super polite. Um, it was the undercover cops and that had a different agenda, like somebody paid them off to do this. Well, and from what I heard, you, you know, everybody, every big local out there said, "Yeah, you didn't pay off the right cops to do this." And it was just—it's a cowboy town, I guess. Yeah, that's kind of how it is. I, I'm curious. Definitely stay in touch as you talk to that reporter and find out more on this story. Uh, we're going to bring it back to bad news from here in Colorado. <laughs> um, but thanks for calling in, man. Thanks for breaking down the uh, whole okay. story. We'll be bringing it back again in the last hour. If you want to add any details or answer any questions, you can call back in. Bye, bud. All right, thank, thank you. Hey, thanks for calling in. Bye, bye. All right, so first of all, fuck a morning pizza. This pizza, when they say New York style, is it Ragu Brothers pizza? It's, I mean, yeah, I'm gonna matter. have another slice, but no, it's disgusting. It's not, not even New York style. Did, you, did you say extra cheese? Though? No, no. I said okay, regular, imagine if you did, imagine if you said extra cheese. It's regular. It was like, it's it's thick. Put that up. It's like it's a coat of like, paint on there. It doesn't Terrible. look anything like pizza. It's too fluffy to be pizza. Wrong. It's it's. I, it, it, it's As really he grabs his second just slice, stuffs it in his mouth, and shoves it into it's his so mouth. Hard. It's not. It's not New York pizza. No, it's totally not New York pizza. Like that's and why I, I didn't even want weed. it at first. I didn't even want it at first. So I was like, ooh, I don't know. It looks like it's way too much cheese. Look at this. Still, Look at I'm this. I'm still noticing how everybody's only saying I didn't want it at first. Or, hey, well, you, this you is shitty, but it was. It wasn't so bad that I just spit it out, but I could not eat another one. No, I'm done. That's gonna hurt later. I eat Elios, you know, like okay, Elios or Elios. 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 No. Elios. Elios. But how do you spell eel? It's not eel. I know. I know. Elios. Silent E. You just said it was Elios. Invisibly. It's a a pronunciation. It's Elios. No. It is. If you look it up on their website, it says Elios. Your mother says it. Are both correct? But however, I say Elios. You've looked it up on their website. Oh yeah, that's a that's like a conflict I've been having since I was a kid. Elios or Elios? Don't pretend like you've never had that conflict. I have never had that conflict. We just did. Small minded. We just did. You're way more conflict prone than we are. You did in your own mind, and I just sort of conflict massaged it. Which you can't get out. I tried to keep it away. Disappointing. Elios. 
Elios? Yeah, you can't get it. All right, just Jeez. shut the hell up. Who cares? Tomato? <laughs> tomato? Tomato? All right. It's good. definitely a tomato. Um, so, tomato. All right, you guys want to talk it, more bad in, news? Let's bring in the... Yeah, I'm all... Let's bring on. Oh, wait, wait, we got to bring your mic in. we got to bring your mic in. Hold on. Wait, what it is. more bad that. news? Or are you talking about their bad news? Is something else happening, you guys? No, their bad news. All right, that's still bad news, but I was just making sure nothing else happened. No, there then. was the Vegas bad news that we right. just got. Yeah, yeah. So now Colorado bad news. Yeah. Tell the whole story, because we never told it. Okay, oh. well, I, I guess it, it depends on how far you want to go back. Let's let's go back to the beginning. Uh, basically, in, beginning of time. Beginning of time. Uh, <laughs> recreational cannabis time, uh, 2013, January. Uh the bill was signed by Governor Hagen Looper. <coughs> um, we incorporated Blue Mountains, uh, BM Services, uh, MJ Proper, uh, Lazy Lion. There was a few of us that all incorporated as private collectives, uh, mm-hmm. membership uh, assistance programs for recreational cannabis. Uh, on the heels of that, House Bill 1317 went into effect uh, right around May of 13, uh, effectively grandfathering our models in. Uh, in the collective market, um, you went had you had the lazy line that went up into Colorado Springs and set up a brick and mortar location as, and has been very successful. Mm-hmm. Um, been on the reimbursement model for a little over a year now. <laughs> um, in Denver, we BM Services did a delivery model. In other words, we were providing all of our assistance through delivery. So we did uh, reimbursement models down on 420 at Castleman's uh, in a dab bus, in a dab bar. Uh, we were featured on the, the cover of the Denver Post, uh, you know, that basically essentially created the dab bar, uh, or bus rather. I mean, we used a bus to prove our point that it was legal and that we could do it legally, et cetera, in Rob Corey's parking lot. And so Eric Gorski published that article and, and basically the, the momentum of events has unfolded ever since. Uh, Ed from MJ Proper was on the delivery model and was functioning last year, just like BM Services. Um, he actually picked up a undercover officer and you know did reimbursement to that officer four or five times. Okay, uh, Denver ended up filing charges against Ed Kaus and arresting him. Uh, Mr. Kaus sat in jail for eight months. He had. Uh, some other back charges that he was dealing with, uh, along with the cannabis charges as well. Uh, the district attorney uh, offered deal after deal after deal to him and his, you know, aging wife, and they declined the offers. Mr. Kaus is a former uh, uh, legal, uh, paralegal, so he does have some legal background. And so he defended himself successfully in the case, and the district attorney dropped the case, quote-unquote, in the interest of justice. And so he was basically notified by the court that, you know, what he was doing wasn't illegal, but that he needed to find a place to do it. And so when Ed got out of jail, he contacted me. You know, we're still operating on the Blue Mountains model, had been for the last, you know, year. And asked me what, you know, I thought he should do. And I said, well, they gave you a green light and they said, go, you know, go find your place to do it and get your your operation up and running. And so he found the location off of uh, Pecos and Alameda. And so... He trademarked the name POTUS, which is a acronym for people of the United States. It was um, out of many one, very inclusive uh, location, membership-based. You did have to fill out the application. Uh, almost identical application uh, that Ed handed to the undercover officers uh, that handed him a case last year, in fact. And so uh, as soon as the lease was handled, the facility was up and running. Uh, we actually sent out four certified registered letters to the city attorney, uh, the prosecuting attorney, the judge, and the assistant city attorney, and notified them that we were putting our location there since the uh, charges had been dropped and that we had been deemed operating justfully uh, within the law. And so we opened the doors, what would you say, late February, would, would that be correct, Norm? Somewhere around there. I'm not positive of the exact date. Yeah, it was. It would. It would have been right at the end of February. Um, and so, the club is a locked membership club. You can't get in the door without knocking on the door and gaining entry from somebody giving you access. And so, on March 11th, uh, we were in the club. We had like six or eight people in the club, uh, all enjoying the the facility, and we got a knock on the door. 
And it wasn't a hard knock. It wasn't a cop knock. It wasn't, it was just a knock. And so Ed, standing at the door, who, you know, mind you, is an elderly gentleman. He's, you know, 65 plus, you know, opened the door. And as soon as he opened the door, they reached in and grabbed his wrist and physically yanked him out into the street. Now, I'm standing behind the bar, and I just witnessed Ed disappear out the door, and I'm not exactly sure what happened. So I'm making my way towards the door, and as I am walking from behind the bar, here comes uh, six cops, you know, in rank, walking in the door. And <clears throat> they come in drug raid style. Um, you know, the first thing we ask them, does anybody have a search warrant? No, nobody's got a search warrant. This is a public location, da 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 well, no, it's not a public location. This is a private location. But obviously you have guns and badges, so we'll let you do your thing, but you don't have a search warrant. And they said, no, that's correct. We don't have a search warrant. Okay. So they questioned, questioned everybody in the bar, basically sent them packing uh, once they ID'd everybody, didn't find any arrest warrants, et cetera. Nathan Christensen, who was a former Iraq vet, was sitting at the end of the bar. And he told them, you know, I don't have a ride, you know, because he's disabled. Uh, do I need to leave? And the cops told him, no, you don't have to leave. You can stay. So he literally stepped back up to the bar, plugged his e-nail back in, and started doing dabs. <laughs> and so <laughs> it's it's me and Ed. Ed is in at the front door. They dragged him back in the front door. He He's in bracelets, okay, sitting at the front door. Uh, the cops are questioning me. I, of course, I'm telling them they need to talk to my attorney. And so, you know, I haven't given them any information. And so... After they secure the, the building, it's 8,000 square foot. It took them 10 minutes to walk through there. Um, you know, they come back, and the one cop looks at the other cop and says, well, we can't hand out any uh, public consumption tickets. Nobody was smoking. And so when the cops walked in, like literally, for whatever reason, nobody was smoking. We were all just looking stone-faced at the cops. And so the one cop says to the other cop, it looked like a vice cop, and then we had a guy in uniform with, like, a flak jacket on. And the vice cop says to the... The uniform cop, hey, you give him a 44-302, whatever it is. And then he looked over at me and he says, you give him a, a 38 dash, whatever the ordinance was. And so they take Ed out of the bracelets and they hand him a clean indoor air act violation ticket on a gold citation. And they hand me a possession distribution ticket of under four ounces, which is a misdemeanor, which was also on a gold citation. And they left. Okay. And so... We immediately went back on the Facebook and published that we would be open again. In fact, we never closed. We told people to come on back down, you know, that the club would continue to be open. And we had talked about this in the structure when we opened up the club. What if they come? What if they do this? What are we going to do? Are we going to reopen? You know, how long are we going to be willing to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Denver? And basically we came to the conclusion until we got a cease and desist. And so they took all of our product. They took, you know, five ounces of shatter. They took our pre-rolls. They took... Uh, you know, any cannabis that was on the shelf, et cetera, and they left. And that was it. And so, you know, we set the, com set the company back up. We bought <coughs> all our reimbursement back in for all of our members. There's over 250 members within the POTUS community alone. Uh, Blue Mountains has over 600 members standing alone in and of itself. Uh, we can provide assistance, basically six plants for every one of those individuals and up to an ounce of cannabis. So as far as the legal structure that we're operating on, we have, you know, the ability to have the cannabis in the clubhouse, and we also have the ability to provide the reimbursement within the clubhouse under state law. And so, you know, we basically disseminated that the cops were gone. They did what they did. They were going to figure it out, and then, you know, they weren't going to be back, okay? And so on the very next day, uh, we get back in the club, and we get a knock at the door, 10 a.m., and you open up the door, and it's a fire marshal. You know, fire marshal wants to inspect fire code. So they walk through, the, the fire marshal walks through, and, of course, we, we pass fire code. Everything's good. And so the fire marshal leaves. You know, and he w basically explained to us, look, you know, one guy a day gets this radio. And he's like, you know, you're lucky it was my day. You know, because I don't really care. Everything's legal, and as far as I can see, everything in here is up to code. And he left, Okay. So we ended up throwing a party that weekend. It was it was the controversial AJ Hashman's party.
party, okay? You know, the one that always gets harassed at the Roxy or water or wherever he throws it. Yeah, okay? they really exactly. have their... Exactly. exactly. And the, the fire sense. marshal warned us, too, that code enforcement was going to be back with the police. And okay. so the thing is, is, look, we had all these things in mind. We made sure that code was right. We made sure that our our... our our structure was right. We made sure that the club membership was structured correctly. The papership was structured correctly. You had to fill out every form, et cetera, before you could even partake in the club. And I mean, people were upset. It was like a 12 page application. People were like, oh my God, why do I got to sign my life away? Well, because that's what protects us. Right. Or and theoretically. Theoretically. And that's exactly it. And so after, you know, building code came through and fire code came through and there were no more violations, I think it was pretty clear to the city of Denver that they didn't have uh, an ace in the sleeve to pull out. And so, you know, basically what they did is they set it all back up for an undercover investigation on 418, you know, which is 420 weekend. It's the biggest weekend, of course, right? Of course they did. And, right. and if we had a full house on Saturday, you know, no doubt there was there was a full house, you know, there was probably 50, 75 people in there in the middle of the afternoon yep. when the cops came in. And so, you know, I'm actually behind the bar. The member comes up to me, asks for a $60 sack, which struck me as a bit odd because typically it's a quarter or it's an eighth or it's a gram. You know, and this guy asked for a 60, and I turned around. I was like, you want a 60? He's like, yeah, a 60. I said, okay, here's your 60. So I waited out. I gave it to him, and he walked away. And so as I walked over to the front of the counter, uh, all of a sudden the door opens up. We get a knock. The doorman opens the door. Cops rush in with a piece of paper in their hand, and they're like, we got a search warrant. We got a search warrant. Everybody sit down, da 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 And, I mean, they came in 12 deep. I, I, I counted every single one of them, Okay. So they come in 12 deep like it's a drug raid. They are wearing covered <laughs> masks as if it was a meth lab or as if this was a, uh, you know. Crack house. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. and we're talking about a legal substance in the state of Colorado. We're talking about a private facility. We're talking about everybody in the facility over 21 and partaking within legal amounts. So. I don't even understand where the disconnect is with even the police having the nerve to come in in a fashion like they did. If they so, want to come and have a talk about it, you know, they should send us a letter. Yeah. So an undercover had obviously become a member, right? So well, that's how that guy was able fact, to come in. In fact, two undercovers had been become a member. The, the undercover that came in initially on the 11th that handed me the first citation, okay, because we received the discovery for that, okay, he then brought his buddy in on the 18th. And it says right in the discovery, you know, they filled out the membership forms, yep. they paid the membership fee, and then they proceeded to the bar to get the reimbursements. Well, they've done everything legally that we've required them to do as an assistance model in the state of Colorado. And so my position is, is I don't care if you're a DEA agent. If you're in the state of Colorado and you're 21 and you want some assistance with some cannabis, I'm there for you. I mean, it's legal in this state. The substance is legal. There's no reason I shouldn't be able to provide that substance for you or any other member in the state of Colorado. Never had a problem helping people for a minute. Never had any tr trouble now since since uh, since we're legal. You know, it's funny because I've spent more time in court since it's been legal hmm. than I ever have prior to it being legal. That's funny. Have you noticed that? Um, nobody died from weed until it went legal as well. It's <laughs> funny. That is that right. <laughs> nobody medically even died from it until we legalized yeah, it recreationally. Talking about that yesterday. Yeah, and so it's funny because it, you know they, it, it, you know, nothing illegal happened. Okay, and and I'm confident that when you know I get into the district attorney's office and we have a uh, solid man-to-man -man conversation about what model we were executing, you know, our timelines of events, how we did things, when we did them, and the fact that I'm not a criminal. I mean, criminals don't send certified registered letters to city yeah. attorneys yeah. and judges <laughs> and tell the them worst ones exactly ever where they're going to be <laughs> at bad, doing what bad they criminals, do. Bad criminals. The DA, the DA is not going to know more than you. You're going to have to school the DA. And that's <laughs> just exactly it. I will be in there uh, probably explaining more to the law to makers and, and the people that are, that are controlling that than than themselves and that that is disheartening you know and I guess it gets back to kind of the reason that we're all here you know uh, and I guess the message is is that it's not being regulated like alcohol and I and I can make it real simple and and explain it to you real easy if you take three documents House Bill 1284 which regulated medical marijuana 
If you take House Bill 1317, which regulates recreational cannabis, and you take current alcohol regulations in the state of Colorado, and you put them on a table, and you get anybody to read and compare those documents, okay? You can take those three documents and compare them, and you can ask anybody which two are the most alike, okay? The two that are most alike are 1284 and 1317. In fact, 1317 was basically crafted directly off of 1284. Uh, the entire quote was basically ripped out of there. <coughs> there has been some tweaks for uh, red card emission, uh, 21 up in sales, uh, etc. But it's not being regulated like alcohol. There's not even one paragraph in alcohol regulation codes that match 1317. And so just from a basic perspective of taking words on paper and comparing them and seeing which two are the most alike, it's a simple assertion for anybody that can read and compare. I don't care how conservative, conservative you are, I don't care if you hate weed, I don't care any of those things. If you can read the documents and tell me which two are the most alike, it's easy. It's like Sesame Street. <laughs> it's That's like tricky for some people. <laughs> I, I do have <laughs> questions. <laughs> I have you, You've provoked <laughs> a lot of questions in me. Yeah, why don't we, just in case we've had any new listeners since his explanation, just remind everybody what we're talking about. I do want to do that. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking we should do shout outs. Bring it Perfect. back. Yep. Like That's a real good. show. Like a real All right. Show. Cool. I'm Let's a real show. <laughs> I'm a real show now. <laughs> of course, big, 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 big shout out to Way to Grow. Uh, check them out at seven locations all around the state. Still Adams. the dirt bag sale. Is it still? It's still it's two dirt months bag. in a row. Yeah. Can't still the dirt bag sale, guys. And maybe on. our f computer just froze. No, even no. the signs on the way. I was there yesterday. The signs on the way to go. Because they call it the dirt cheap. You know what? I remember this from last year too. Double dirt, double down dirt cheap. Yeah, I remember double making the jokes. Cheap. Yeah. And yeah. Because I mean, now everyone's getting their outdoor gardens going. I put my tomatoes in. Mother's Day is when everyone my plants. My tomato, your tomato. You plant? Do you grow vegetables? Not here yet, but at the oh, Aces, man. of course. All my cucumbers and my, my basket of fire peppers doing great. But yeah, I went to Way to Grow to get my cocoa and my Prolite, my basic nudes, just for the... And you use that Adam Dunshow code, right? Absolutely, 25% off. It's more than that. I got 25% off my stuff. They're capping you. <laughs> they, they, they know you're the kid. That's they recognize why. the man bun. They're, They're like, like oh, oh, the kid, oh. he, he, gets a, uh. he gets chopped. Chopped. 5%. It's all right, 25% is still higher than uh, pretty much anybody else's discount. Anybody there, else. So. Sage Master's only getting twenty. So <laughs> he knows everyone's account. He's just dropping your account. <laughs> like, <laughs> Nobody, nobody's using my account anymore. But they're using the the show Adam account. Dunn show account exactly. Keep using it, guys. We'll we'll try to get a sweet hookup negotiated. I feel like that's what we could do if a lo if enough people use it. We can be like, look, Corey, how about we do a special that if people use this account, this one special product yep. is like super cheap this month. You know what I mean? Like a dollar. A dollar. Yeah. We're going for the dollar sale. Dollar sale. I love, love dollars. that. I love Dun dollar. You know, like <laughs> Dun dollar. I tell you, now that I got a kid, I cruise through the dollar store. Sometimes I go, damn, this stuff. I would buy that. For, I'll take that for a dollar. I'll buy that for a dollar. <laughs> 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 I'll go through with five bucks and come out with like four things. And yeah. it's perfect. All right, big shout out to Incredibles Edibles. Yes, I got the Afogato bar did in my you life. Get one? I do. Yes, I expected the he caramel to it? be like a caramello for some reason. No, it's, you have to really no, like no. coffee. Like it's got whole yeah, it's coffee, more coffee there. than anything else. Crunchy, crunchy. It's not the best thing right before bed. No, no. Oh, did you oh, have to brush oh. your teeth right after two? That's awesome. Well, yeah, yeah. There's oh. none too. But Extra. it was effective, right? And it was better than the fire barrier. Oh. Not necessarily better. Speaking just of which, speaking of which, hold on, hold on. I don't know if it was better than the fire barrier. Stacy had a one in three quarters of a piece, I guess. Of a. Uh, I think it was the monkey bar. Okay, so that's a weak one. So the monkey bar is the banana walnut bar. I think it was, but I'm not 100 milligrams. Not 100 percent sure. She might have to so she had about on that one. 45 milligrams. But then it was take. like it was funny because like she, you know we would put Nick to bed and then like I went downstairs, made food, had food already, sat there, went up three, four times trying to wake her up, and I was just like, it was me remembering that she ate the cake. You know, it was actually yeah. like, I, I did the remember. I was like, oh, you're not getting up. Yeah, yeah we're, like, we're just gonna just, give up on this was, one. I was like, I'll just go put your food on the fridge for uh, you. So, I love yeah. it. You know, anything before, anytime before bed is, is, like, is once you lay down after edibles, it's done. Gone, you're not gonna have much time done. to think about it. You're like, yeah. yeah, this edibles. <laughs> that was it. Done. Of course, big, big shout out to Jeremy at Build the Soil. Oh, yeah. Dude, let's bring him on again to teach us about let's more. Those episodes are wildly popular. Let's go out to a spot and shoot. You want to go out to the Western Slope and film on location? It's like four hours away. I know. Yeah, it's really far, man. I know. We it's can a nice out, ride. We can figure out some angles and come out. To a motel sponsor. 
Yeah, exactly. Or we, we'll be <laughs> on the road. We'll do it on the road. Why don't we just get him a GoPro and let him broadcast on our live stream? That's going to do too. Let's do that. And then Tell we can me, Cam. You. We'll work that out. Go to Build the Soil. A lot of people have been hitting me up for the so code, Cam. the Adam Dunn show code for Build the Soil. I think it was ADS420, but that might have been for something specific. What you got to do is just hit Jeremy up and ask him and tell him you're listening to the show, you need the discount. And of course, big, big, big shout out to Dark Horse Genetics. Where's, where are you hiding, Jason? He's hiding. To your left. He's literally I'm hiding. like, uh, He's literally hiding. yeah, get, uh, get on the mic, buddy. No, it's there. It's like, yeah, hey, talk uh, on the microphone. Yeah, hey, hey, don't just hey, wave. Hey, talk, hey, talk. Hey, hey, hey. What's up, everybody? What's going on with out. you? We, we never have, we have, I like, I look at your website for updates. I got some updates. Update us. I got yeah. a lot of updates. Do that, do that, do that. Uh, let's see. SpaceX. What? You know about SpaceX? You're you going on us? SpaceX? Worked a little deal with SpaceX. No. Yeah, we're putting some seeds into orbit. No, really? Are you yeah. doing that? Yep. Cool. I need to know uh, what tests. Dark Star, we're going to throw a send. What real. tests you would like to see done on seeds that have been to orbit and back? Nice. Got well, another one for you, another really sweet one. Um, Bobby Flay. What? Talk to Bobby Flay. That's cool. A little bit. We're not done. But uh, I think we're bringing an edible line to Denver, which would be sick. A Bobby Flay edible line. With but all this is down the road. Don't How expect it tomorrow. I, I, I've I been thought working. we were good at wheeling and dealing. But he's I've been like, working, boys. No, seriously. We're sitting here doing a radio hustle. show. He's out hustling. I mean, I mean we've had the, the, the vending machines are, are up and running. Are right? they coming here? Are they coming soon? Vending machines in Denver soon. Um, yes. There's, Denver's really, really hard to work in. As we just heard Jetter talk about a little bit, Denver's hard. But, um, yeah, check out L.A., check out Seattle, check out the website, download the app. And I want to hear more can about we just this put Jetter talk. Can we, no, we're going back. We're can going we go back. Glendale? Can we just put in Glendale? <laughs> Close enough. Yeah, let's do it. Let's put one in uh, in the smoking gun. Yeah, or just set up Life's a... Life's for whatever over there. Put a smaller one. Open up a small... Like, buy out one of those. Other ones, like, hey, get out of, get out of here. Uh, <laughs> let's also, of course, shout out AU Extracts. For sure. Hey, you. Hey, you. Also doing some big things. Tell me about guys. that. I don't know. You, yeah. How about, what, I, I don't tell anybody's story. There's another collab <coughs> we got working on at UX Tracks. Boom. Bam. Go ahead. And you say um, it. Do it. As far as I know right now, it's in the preliminary stages as well. But I think that we're going to uh, be giving at UX Tracks a lot of material. And hopefully we're working out a little bit of a deal where we'll have a greenhouse right next to them. And I think... Uh, a lot of breeders are going to be down there. Jocelyn the Plata's in the area. I'll be down there. I heard a rumor Dunn's going to be playing around down there. So uh, <laughs> Why am I the last one to hear these might rumors? rumors. Turn into a really I hear it at the same time spot. as everybody on the internet, and Dunn winks at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how it works. But the big deals go down. I can't tell, them. I can't tell you because you get all you know, <laughs> sticky. No, what? <laughs> <laughs> I just let you sign the paper. <laughs> it's on the camera. <laughs> exactly. Um... Also, Chalice, uh, a little shout out to them for getting it. It's starting to get momentum. You know, every time I put on my uh, phone, it's like, bam! Yet all the another indoors. another act is being added on. Yeah, yeah so the lineup's so many, so pretty sick, dude. So many music. Action Bronson, dude. Playing. It's cool to bring the fam, right? No, no. I don't no? think to that event. I don't no. think that's a family event. Fuck no. Can they chill in the hotel? Huh? I was going to get fair in those ear things, dude. I almost bought them her, for her birthday literally yesterday. I was like, oh, we might go to Chalice. I wouldn't. I, I mean, think I, it's such no. a... No. 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 Arise Festival we're sticking it to? Definitely Arise. Arise okay. is going to be It's also going to be really hot. It's going to be yeah, fun. It's, yeah, it's going to be really hot. hot. Is it going to be really hot? I don't even know if I want to go now. July. And they just sold out all of their indoor we AC don't want to be indoor. You don't want to be indoor, so. though. It's boring. What? All hot. the stages are outside. It's going to be all stages. Oh, Dawn, it's going to be so hot and dusty. Your beard's going to be all like dreadlocked. Oh. Wook out. Wook, I can look, I can look it up. Wook it's out. Fine. I can do that. Oh, it's going to be Mad have, Max. <sighs> yeah, it could be Mad Max. That'd be good. We can do that for a All right, let's fucking do it. All right. We'll all do right. the Mad Max edition. There you go. Boom. Boom. All right. Uh, and on that note, you want to bring it back? Bring it back. So uh, we're talking here with Chris Jetter. Of po formerly of POTUS or still of POTUS? Well, we're with Blue Mountain, so you know you got to understand the structure of the uh, the sure. The and that's where my questions are aimed. So yeah, please. and and let me uh, let me clue you in. Basically, the the structure was when MJ Proper Ed came to us and asked us if we wanted to be a part of a club. Uh, the answer is yes, and the answer is always yes. Adam Dunn, you want to open a club? Yes. Mike, you want to open a club? Yes. Um, look, we're, we're in it to win it, and we feel that we can provide reimbursement services in a box, on a plane, and a train with a fox. We don't care where it's at in the state of Colorado. <laughs> 
you want reimbursement, we're on spot. We'll can handle you, it. Can you can you explain how that works legally? Yeah, I can. Okay, basically. Well, I was going to say that's definitely because <laughs> Dr. Seuss Because here's reference. the thing. All, <laughs> before, even before the Dr. Seuss <laughs> reference, all of this sounded really awesome. I actually do want to do one more pause before I end. Hit pre- press you for the answer. Sure. Hit press pe- pe- you for the That, 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 that. <laughs> if you're watching the show, hit like right now, please. I'm going to try to point to it. It looks <laughs> like if I go like this, I might be pointing to the like button. Somewhere in this region here, hit like or tweet or not not the heart, not the one that's over above uh, the kid. Does it look like this? The one above me. Is it a thumbs up? No, not It's not up. those like buttons or thumbs up, right? It's uh, it probably is Does now. It just say like. But anyone, a- anyway, everyone, please, please, please. Now, see, I see you guys clicking the wrong like button. Click the Facebook like button. There's like a hundred of you watching. If even half of you click it, we'll be able to get this thing moving in an extremely awesome direction. That's all we're gonna ask for admission to this. Now then, <laughs> Jetter. Tell us a secret to how you do the reimbursement services. Okay, it, it's in assistance. Okay, what the Constitution says in the state of Colorado is, and I'll quote it, assisting another person who is 21 years of age or older in any of the char- characteristics of the acts described in paragraphs uh, A through D of this subsection. Okay, A through D uh, basically talk about uh, possession. Uh, using, displaying, purchasing, or transporting marijuana accessories or one ounce or less of marijuana. Uh, Possession, growing, processing, or transporting no more than six marijuana plants, with three or fewer being mature flowering plants, and possession of the marijuana produced by the plants on the premises where the plants were grown, provided that their growing takes place in an enclosed lock space and is not conducted openly or publicly and is not made available for sale, okay? Uh, Transfer of one ounce or less of marijuana without remuneration to a person who is 21 years of age or older. The R word. The R word, okay? In consumption of marijuana provided that nothing in this section shall permit consumption that is conducted openly and publicly or in a manner that endangers others. All right, so I get that, but remuneration means money. Yes. So it means anything. Well, well let sure me, anything. And, right. So and, l- and let me break it down. It's simple. Yeah. It's like this. Uh, if Bike Holly here doesn't grow cannabis, okay, and he knows that Blue Mountains grows great cannabis because his friends have had some recreational cannabis, he needs assistance, okay? Bike Holly can go into a recreational cannabis center right now and purchase cannabis and be provided a 27% tax or whatever, okay? Sure. Or he can go talk to Adam Dunn and say, Adam, dude, grow six plants for me. Yeah, bro. And Adam will and can, okay? Well, now, so here's, here's where I'm surprised. Okay. The can part. That's okay to do. You can do that. There's, it's, I mean, it says it right there in the Constitution. It's right there in the amendment that was passed. Okay, so and it's literally that easy. It's that easy. Now Dunn can provide. Wait, you knew this all along. Yeah, Jeter, Jeter told me this years ago. Yeah, Dunn can provide the cannabis. Okay, now Dunn's got some significant costs into providing that cannabis. He's got to pay his rent bill. He has to pay his electric bill. He has to pay for newts. He has to pay for the water bill. He has to pay for all of the things that it costs to grow that cannabis. Okay, mm-hmm. and provide that cannabis for Mister Howley. Okay, he can give Mr. Halley an ounce of that cannabis at any time he wants it, and Mr. Halley can reimburse him for the cost that went into that cannabis. So, is there court precedent for this? Well, no, of course not. It's all gray. I mean, you're talking about an area that has never been dragged through the court. Look, we thought we would drag through this situation once last year in Denver and prevailed. You know, Ed had his case dropped. It right. was dropped, quote so unquote, dropped the name it, so of there justice. Was no precedent. Sure. And this is the thing. This is this is what the city of Denver is doing and will continue to do. And I want to make this very clear, okay? They come in, they parade us out on the streets, and they make it a high profile case. It hits the Westward. It hits the Denver Post. It makes us look at look like criminals, okay? But in reality, when we go into the district 
attorney's office, Mitch Morrissey's office, and I lay my Fifty Shades of Grey down on the table. And they decide, well, you know what? We really don't have the, the stomach to prosecute this case. You know, Kid, what's wrong with you? <laughs> it's just a uh, little the reference, but it's just funny. Uh, that, that's, it's just a funny reference. We're, we're going to drop this case, okay? <laughs> well, the problem is, is that puts me right back in the gray area, just like it put Ed back in the gray area last year. And despite sending out certified registered letters to the city attorney, the judge, the prosecuting attorney, et cetera, right. we still got another undercover investigation into our private membership club. Mm -hmm. The club is dual residency. It's residency and ownership uh, business base. So you've yeah. got the zoning for both pieces there. <clears throat> and I mean, there was an apartment there. Yeah, I mean, we might as well be sitting in Ed's living room and yep. all doing bong hits, which is completely legal in the state of Colorado. So you'd think. Yeah. So <laughs> and was the entranceway like the, it's, they have two different entranceways? Or is there a no, you come in through the front door. So you knock on the door. We open the door. We let you in. Right. We determine who you are. You either have access or you don't. I mean, it's simple. And they breached that by pulling him out, and then on like, the first on the first go around, you know, yeah. they they actually came in, they signed the membership forms, they got the reimbursement legally, you know, and then they left, and then they came in and conducted a, a drug operation, quote unquote, right, and handed out a gold citation for a misdemeanor. Now, now you got when you say gold citation, I picture Willy Wonka gold ticket. No, like no, a, it's standard, a, regular old, a standard, standard, a traffic ticket. You mean like golden rod? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Yellow piece of okay. paper. Not a bad one. Now not, consider not this: bad. the second time when they came in on 418, they literally put us in handcuffs on the sidewalk. Okay, dragged us downtown, quote unquote, for questioning. They, they kidnapped us okay. for about an hour and a half. Nobody's picture got taken. Nobody was charged. Nobody was actually put in jail. And in fact, they handed me the same gold citation with the same charge that they handed me a month earlier. So, so, so they never this, told wait. you that you were under arrest. Did no. They, did they read you? They your told rights? us they were taking us downtown for questioning. And they never asked us and one never question. Never asked us one question. And they they sat us in a room for two hours and didn't ask one question. So technically, right there in itself, they can't. I mean, unless you're under arrest, they they can't forcefully take you anywhere. They right? detained well, us. Obviously, they did. They took did. us downtown. Well, no, I guess you can be detained for 24 hours. I guess for probable right. cause. You know, and the other thing right? is, look, I, you know, as soon as the cops hit the door, you know, I get I get my attorney on the phone and I got my my phone in hand asking the cops, hey. You know, who's the supervisor? Who wants to talk to the attorney? You know, did we get one of those cops to actually raise a hand and take that phone? No. Nope. And did, did any of those cops, uh, did they even let us read a search warrant? Did you oh, no. Did you see one page of a search warrant? Oh, no, not one. The dude just walked around the building just waving it around, and then it got put up. And so, so he said he had it. He never showed yeah, it. Yeah, we never that. physically never registered. And so as they detain us and they take us downtown, they physically ransack the building as if it was like a meth raid. I mean... Uh, the tables were disheveled. All the product was stolen out of the uh, cases once again. They took all of our pre-rolls, mm -hmm. all of our wax, all of our shatter. You know, we had edibles for the weekend. It was 418. We were stocked up for all of our members. It was a big party. Yep. And they crashed the party. That's Well, that's like, uh, again, we, we kind of go back to the uh, Dutch mentality where they know they got you in a kind of yo-yo effect where they can come in. And they call it plucking you like a chicken there. They go, oh, we come in, we pluck you, you know, and you've been plucked. You just sort of left there and with nothing, you know, a couple, you know, and you have to nurse yourself back up. And they wait until you're at the kind of the healthiest, and then they come in and do it again. Yep. And they kind of just do that to you every few years. And it's just become so normal that you're kind of like, whoa, it's been four or five years. It's kind of weird, you know, and I'll boom. I'm expecting a plucking. And well, you'll get plucked again, and then you're like, ah. And that's why we really need light on this subject now, because the thing is, is, look, I've got two criminal cases going through the criminal justice system right now. Uh, the legislators haven't regulated like alcohol. If they had, they would have given us a big head nod and a smile. So that's my question number two. Where was that onus placed? I mean, I know they called the bill that, but it didn't actually say in the proposed language anywhere that they were going to regulate it like alcohol, right? Oh, well, yeah. yeah. They, they <laughs> sold us that, that whole election on regulate it like alcohol. No, I know, I know, they, I know that was the sales pitch, for it, sure. If, if they would have said regulate it like medical marijuana, I wouldn't have voted on it. If they said that they were going to not do it that way, I would have just kept my red card. Right. They sold me that vote on regulate this like alcohol. 
And you could have, you could they could have titled it and they could have regulated it like medical marijuana. That sure. could have been viable and the voters may have voted on it. And it certainly was, would have been more honest. Exactly. But the problem is, is that you have a, a amendment that was regulate like alcohol and they are regulating like medical marijuana. They've been, they've adopted the entire code. In fact, I don't know of one brew, microbrew that needs to hop track track hops to sale yeah, you know what right? i mean or all their barley and all their and, weed and, they, and the excuse no they give for that is well beer is not illegal in all 50 or beer is, is legal everywhere well it doesn't matter i can't leave colorado with colorado booze and travel to utah with it because right. that is illegal right. I can't is take illegal. a bottle of strand so, and bring it to pennsylvania it's just like me. the public consumption piece i hear over and over and over oh my god but you got public consumption well you know what you can't consume alcohol publicly in the state of colorado Public parks, you can consume near beer. You can't walk down the street and drink a beer. You will be arrested. You will be cited for public, public intoxication. intoxication. Okay. So by definition, drinking a beer in a bar is not public consumption. No. So why is smoking cannabis in a in a cannabis bar considered public right. consumption? Clearly, that's not public. Mm. That's not public. And why is it okay to drink all this alcohol in football games and baseball games and stuff? That's I mean, definitely in public. I can go to Chuck E. Cheese. I can have my four-year-old running around at my knee level with open beers and yeah. pitchers flowing, and that's all regulated in the state of Colorado. Yeah, no, Chuck E. Cheese is always a good example if you really want to compare it <laughs> to anybody. Cheese. Like, hmm, that's kind of a weird mix. I just always found it strange that they chose a like mouse or a rat as their food mascot. Well, one, this is just me. One, cheese, one of the good me. things you can compare it to is how the gun laws were voted on down south and then the government government officials changed the way that worked. They they recalled all those people. Those people lost their jobs. Why aren't we doing that about the weed? Because I voted for it to be regulated like alcohol. And nothing I think else. Everybody did. And I think the thing is, is like I think. I think it could have been easy for the legislators to adopt 1284 and say, okay, we're going to start with this and then move into regulate like alcohol. In other words, provide bar licenses, you know, provide distribution licenses. Right, provide just come up with the, the immediate transition for the short term just because it's there right now. Correct. But it's been two years. They've right. had two legislative sessions, and they're not regulating anything like alcohol. In fact, they're regulating it like medical marijuana, and then they're adding additional scrutinies on top of the medical marijuana code. You know, the, the constitutional amendment also says that they cannot recriminalize marijuana, okay? They can't introduce any new criminal code in marijuana in the state of Colorado. And, and take example, I think it's good to look at alcohol. I mean, look at alcohol in the reserve, uh, reverse position. Who in Colorado is being cited criminally for alcohol? Bars for underage sales? Liquor stores right for underage right, sales? Well, the thing is now they love in the combination of if you have alcohol and you can anybody smokes in your place and then boom. You're, you're I know, but I, I'm just talking about alcohol specifically. Like what criminal citations are being handed out for alcohol other than underage drinking and, and DUI? You can't think of one. Right? Are they are they busting me because I brought you a six pack and you reimbursed me for the cost of that beer and some gas? In fact, he showed Hell up no. at your party, he brought you a case of beer. You had to reimburse him, right? Yeah, no, that I mean that that, that whole like uh, bartender thing too, as far as like, you know, oh yeah, you'll get you get busted if someone gets drunk and crashes. It never really happens. You know what I mean? It's okay, like, when does once it in a happen? while, very but rarely. not, but not. And so look look through so look through the looking glass from the other side. Okay, if marijuana is regulated like alcohol then alcohol is regulated like marijuana in the state of Colorado, right? Should be. Yeah, that well, that, that, that is the theory, right? I mean, you should basically be able to look at it both ways. I mean, if they are alike. Oh, and yeah. so there's, there's so many examples within the alcohol industry. Like, for example, have you ever seen a Coors Light with a child-proof cap? Mm-hmm. Yeah, or, or even those things like, are hard to open though. Or even if like, you have little kid hands. Even doing tasters, hands. doing tasters at liquor stores. You have know, you ever like seen? You like, hey, try this. Have you, you know, seen like, a childproof <laughs> exit bag as you're yeah. leaving Tipsies? Have you ever went into a liquor Fuck store and the guy at the counter tell you, "Oh, I can't sell you more than a six pack." Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. You got an out of state ID. I can only sell you a shot today, sir. All right. Uh, I mean, some stuff like that, like in Utah. Well, oh, Utah. This is a Utah. This is this is the state of Colorado, <laughs> right? And we're regulating marijuana like alcohol in the state of Colorado. But, uh, what yeah. I'm saying though is, like, we we 
there was no one made any commitment to do that. Really. Well, the word "like" is a funny word. It, 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 if yeah. you bring up Utah, though, their whole thing was ran just like a private club, like we were running our club. Well, and that's that's exactly the point. It it, it has to permit for that. And, and you guys would keep talking about remuneration. Remuneration actually means no profit. So every business in this state is running illegally, except for the collectives. Right. I right. mean, you know, they're they're selling all this weed and collecting tax money to tourists. Well, you know, say I fly in from Tennessee or Oklahoma or something, I don't want to buy a gram of wax. I've never done a dab. Right. I want to try a dab first, man. I don't want to be sucked into a whole 60, 70, 80 bucks. Right. Are you forced to buy a bottle of Jack Daniels if you just want a shooter? No. Nope. Hell no. You can get a shot. Especially, yeah. And you can't take it, you can't take it home either. You can take a <laughs> bottle of wine home, like, though, if you've opened you gotta, it. You got to, like... Take this bottle and drink it today. But but you <laughs> but can you can open a bottle of wine and drink part of it and take it home, recork it and take it yeah. home. And you can't right. do that in the state of Colorado. That's no, obviously yeah. obviously. So you know the thing is is like I, you know when you look at when you examine <coughs> multiple parts of it, you know, and when you look at it as a whole, and if you compare, you know, look, regulations are words, guys. Regulations <laughs> are words. Words are important. Okay, that's what any lawyer will tell you. That's what any judge will tell you. Okay, and if so, if that's the case, then the words regulate, like, and alcohol are three very important words. And I don't think it's too difficult to pull up the definitions of all three of those words, lay them down succinctly in succession, and say, oh, we're not doing that. We are regulating like medical and, marijuana. And they were side by side in the title, alcohol, marijuana, whatever the last word was, but it was in the title. Yeah, and I think it was also the Alcohol uh, Marijuana Equalization Initiative. Right. right. And That's so exactly what if we was. want to talk about equalization and you want to define equalization, well, we can get a lot more succinct about how it's not being regulated like alcohol. Yeah, no, we definitely we definitely never got the even close to that in any way, shape, no, or form. No, not, not at all. Not in the, in more these like first two years. More like plutonium, a little less mm -hmm. like alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> well, I feel jacked because of the way I voted for it because, like he said, that was the title of it, and that's what I voted for. I, I wanted to be able to go into a bar and do a dab or a bong hit. And I think anybody yeah. that did vote for it did vote for it in that respect. It, look, the reason we gave them a moral compass and a direction to go like alcohol was so that they didn't have to reinvent every wheel and reinvent every scenario that sure. this is going to fit into. It's just like alcohol, but guess what? It's weed, and you smoke it or you eat it. Yeah, exactly, and it's like a lot of people don't have super comfy spots at their house to do these things, and yeah. if they don't have they don't have the tools to do it. Well, and if you got children, I mean, I've got a four year old at home, and you know, I'm I'm constantly out on the balcony, you know, smoking because you don't want to be cold, cold, yeah, and smoking. You, you, you're not, yeah, you're not going to chong out the baby, but yeah, would I like to go down to the bar locally while the wife sits at home with a four year old? And yeah, that would be great, but I can't do that in the state of Colorado. In fact, I provided a location that was more like alcohol than any other model in the state. And I got undercover operatives in the building for it. Yeah, no, and, and, they, and it's, a, it's like an evolution that's going to have to happen. Yeah, so as it's you're, only going to be as you're, testing as you're the dealing waters. with this, it'll when, be when like the next guy will be like, oh, you know what? Guess what? The rules change, and the next guy rolls in. He owns a bar, so they like him because he owns a real bar. Oh, you have a real bar. You know how to deal with people drunks all day, so now you can deal with all these stoners, and that's what they're going to think like. You know what I mean? Like, we're and, you're, and you're accurate, worse. Adam. What's going to happen? I, I'll, I'll look at my crystal ball, and I'll tell you exactly what's going to happen in the landscape, okay? Glendale is bringing in bars, weed bars, okay? They're going to come. They're coming soon, okay? And they're going to be in Glendale. Whether it's by city council voting it in, yeah, we think it's a great idea, or the voter initiative goes in next year and the city itself votes it in, okay? Now, what's going to happen is the city of Glendale is going to see a huge revenue, sure. okay? And pretty soon, just like Aurora got jealous of Denver, Denver will get jealous of Glendale, and pretty soon they'll be like, you know what? Maybe we can put in like a dozen weed bars in the city. You know, yeah. and then they will make it like a four hundred thousand dollar requirement, and find the biggest nightclub owners in the exactly. city, exactly. vinyl and all those guys, and then they'll they'll put a tax structure in, and they'll rape everybody, and they'll be like, oh yeah, this was a great idea. Of course, and like years later, and then, but at the same time, be overly restrictive around those places for anybody else who's like not abiding by the rules and stuff and they'll be really harsh more harsh on that because they know that it's like a, like it's like getting a ticket downtown i can't believe it how fast i get one in my car now i'm like go go down there run inside to grab one thing come out and it's like 
Now what the fuck is there a ticket for? I paid the meter. I did. Oh, it's your license plate is not in the right place. And you're like, I don't even have a fucking front bumper, dude. I, I put my thing in the top. It's like there's no bump. I got that one last week. And you're like, are you kidding me? It's like if you're of a Jeep or anything like that, you're definitely going to get a ticket because you can't put one there. Or- well, the thing is, is look, I, you know, I look, I'm down to provide anybody a reimbursement model. OK, so my position is, is that at this point of this of the game, I we need as much press on this as we can. OK, because th- this is the deal. Everybody's got to be aware of what Denver's doing and how they're doing it. Look, they started threatening uh, bars with their liquor licenses through excise and licensing. OK, well, we didn't have a liquor license, so we didn't have a liquor license to threat. So they had to turn around and do nuisance and abatement, which is exactly what they did to us in grassroots. OK, we haven't even had our court dates yet, and they're already filing nuisance and abatement, tra- you know, charges. They're already having Ryan evicted, too. Yeah. And so, so I was just going to read read that article. We were trying to get Ryan on the phone today. Did you hear back from him, Adam? No, I didn't get back from him. No. He's a busy oh, maybe man. Maybe that's him right, him right now. That's right now. Yeah. 206, though. Let's bring yeah. him on. Looks like Washington. Washington. Oh, it must be. Oh, could be seats here now. Seats here now, seats here now. Bringing us an Alaska Cup date. Oof. Crackle, crackle. You made it. Nice. Yeah. Took a little cool. minute. Hey. Hey. You got us, kid. Welcome to the Adam Dunn Show. Yo, yo, who we got there? Go ahead. Can, you should be do, able to hear us. Do we, hello, caller, can you hear us? Hmm. Hello. Hello, yeah, can, hear can you. you hear us? We can hear you. Yeah, I got you. Nice, we got you. What's going on? What What's going on, man? <laughs> Cranking up a little bit. Introduce yourself. Break Break us. Oh, break us your update. My bad. I was just in the front room and so I had the radio on, so I had to come in the bathroom. Uh, uh, this is James and CJ now, uh, bringing me the Alaska, the Great Alaskan Cup date. Alaskan Cup. Um, yeah. So, what cup are you at up there? Uh, actually, it's the Northwest Cannabis Classic. Uh, it's the first of three shows. Uh, it's a newer company. Uh, put up with Corey, he's a really nice guy. Yeah, they've done it really professionally. Um, what they're, what they, uh, what, what it seems to me like they're aiming at is, uh, the three recreational northwestern states. So they have Oregon, um, they've got Seattle coming up, uh, although Washington just pulled some major, uh, illegal law crap. Um, but that's the plan is to, 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 to do the three northwestern states. And then, the winner of this cup goes on to compete against the winner of that cup, and it's kind of a, a cool little setup. And, w- and we were just talking about uh, we're talking about how lame it is here because you can't open up anything possible to consume it. Are they going for like uh, rec, full rec with places to smoke? You think, or is there any kind of plans for that? Or have they talked about because they're, they're so far separate from where we are? Maybe they'll they'll not know what. How, don't don't pick this idea up. This is the one idea you don't want to pick up. But what do you think? What do you think is the uh, situation up there for that? Uh, I, I tried to look into that. They, um, um, I guess it, so. So they passed the law in Oregon. There, then the ninety day, ninety window. I guess it's from when they've been told they flipped up um, their law in February. But kind of like Washington, I guess they um, it's run by the liquor board, and so when you put the drunks in charge of the stoners, and let your competition write your laws. They kind of drag the feet. And uh, I guess they haven't put they implemented the right processes to put the right mechanisms into place. And so currently, um, it's the gray area. You can possess up to an ounce. And you can grow it, but you can't buy seeds anyway. Or it's clones, because they don't have stores where you have it. You just pass that phone. And I've heard that you can um, you can do deliveries, and you can, uh, let's say you would uh, sell the baggie and then... Um, Give away the product <laughs> as donation. Sure. So fifty dollar um, bag. So that that area, but yet they pass recreational, but yet there's you know um, they haven't implemented the process, so to say. Surprise, surprise, uh, and therefore nothing's open. But the cup was awesome, yeah. The cup was awesome. Uh, I was really uh, surprised. I, um, I missed my first flight. Um, if you know me, I usually try to get there about half hour before I'm supposed to fly out, and, uh, well, <laughs> this time I missed it, so it cost me a little extra some bucks to go, but, uh, it was well worth it, it was really nice, it was like I call, uh, khakis and, uh, and polos on carpet, it was, uh, kind of like a morning industrial <laughs> trade show, 
So um, instead of just um, free joints and dabs and T-shirts, and it was agents. more business and ATMs and uh, industry and lights and uh, nutrients and some local trim guys and some local dispensaries. And this is pretty hot. Cool. Um, but they did they did a competition still, right? Like a, a proper cup oh, sort correct. of thing. Oh, correct. They had a full on uh, competition that had um, uh, concentrates, flour, um, hybrids, sativa, all that good stuff as well. Nice. Nice. So did you get to try sample any of the, the entries? How were they? Were, were there any interesting trends being so disconnected from us here in the lower 48? Um, I, I did try some of the entries. Uh, some of them were nice. Um, of course, I asked everybody if you have not used the NFL of or course. if you have the APS. And every, everybody had it. And I was like, no, no. No, everybody the had jar. it. The new jar. So I still, I'm still on the great hunt. Um, I've heard some very, very interesting stories that could um, almost take the Alaska show all over again. Um, but the strains that were won, um, the first place for uh, Indica was Justin, I believe, or excuse me, was Brandon with uh, his boys ATF. Um, then Justin from Green Dream Farms took first for his Tangerine Diesel on the concentrates. And then uh, my guy Evan uh, took Sativa and Hybrid, which uh, I'll get them on the horn here soon. And he uh, was really, really good with his dairy breath and then his orange juice, which nice. I was like, Orange juice? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Nice. So I had to go inquire, made a quick text. Uh, and then my inquiry led to it was Gage Green's orange juice, not franchise orange juice. Interesting. Uh, Cool. The one that we had put uh, cease and desist on. So I'll get those guys in, on the phone and let them holler about that. But yeah, it was, uh, it was really nice. Um, I, I asked them if they were, if I was on like a kind of nice weather streak, but the weather's been not too bad. Um, I guess, it, of course, it snows like out of here, but I, I, I watched the show. But uh, it was, it's, been, it's been nice. The people are really nice. Uh, the hotel rates are expensive as hell. But <laughs> are there polar <laughs> but, but bears? The place is cool. I, I give up to the. Polar bear. No, the pictures that he posted looked beautiful. It didn't look all snowy and miserable. I saw one of the pictures he posted, and it looked beautiful there. There was no polar bears? I mean, there are polar bears in Alaska, I would assume, but not in, it would have to be, like, in the areas closer to Antarctica. It you got to get be. one of those hats, those polar bear hat things. Not the real ones, <laughs> but just the big, stupid, <laughs> fake well, ones. Well, well, I, I, yeah, big, I, I stupid, fake ones. I penguin, like we talked about. Yeah. Any yeah. penguins? Yeah, yeah. Um, they didn't, they, at first... <laughs> You know, I'm kind of a serious smart ass. And so at first, one guy thought I was serious. And he's like, oh, are you here for a zoo? Or do you want to go on a tour? Where do you find to get this penguin? And I was like, I don't know. It's fine here. You're supposed to tell me. Um, and then he went into his spiel. I was like, no, no, dude, I'm joking. And he's like, oh, oh, oh. He's like, oh, we ship everything. Bears. I was like, no, I'm friend around a penguin. Guy wants to, so you found the right hustle. You found, you found the guy who could get guy. us a baby anything we wanted. <laughs> baby anything. Pretty much. Polar bear. Pretty yeah. much. A baby everything. I, I told him I missed the guy. Yeah. I wanted just a Definitely need a polar bear, bear down here. I was pushing it. I was on the wrong, wrong area. But um, so we've got the guys here in, in, in the house. Um, I'll let you holler at them. They can uh, talk. I'll put Evan on the phone first. He took uh, two first place uh, uh, trophies home, which is pretty all right. I think. Yeah, nice. Um, right on. One, one was, um, I guess, the orange juice, which uh, has history behind it. And then the other one has some THC lineage behind it. Um, and, uh, and then one of them is a personal strain. So I'll put him on the phone right now. Cool. Evan, actually. Right on. Thanks, man. Hey, you guys. How are you doing? Hey, how's it going, man? Yo, yo. Hey, how's it going? Good. I'm doing very good. I've actually uh, I've been listening to your guys' show for a few months, and I'm a big fan and um, of Adam Gunn especially. No offense to the rest of you guys, but um, <laughs> I've been growing your gear for a long time. Nice. And I'm going to bring a joint with me into our little spot here, and um, I'm going to spark you. i got some Burmese Kush here. Awesome. Nice. So I've been growing for about two years, and we got uh, I bought a bunch of random one pack. I think I bought like your Acorn, your A Train, your uh, Cushage, and the Burmese Cush, and there was something a else. A lot of faith on a one pack. On one of the seed banks and just grabbed a couple of these things. And uh, the Burmese was the shortest, slowest growing one in veg. And so I gave it to a friend. Yeah. And my friend showed me these pictures two months later of this purple top canopy and these chunky buds with these warts all over them. And I regretted very much giving him the best of all the plants 
cut um, not say that the other ones weren't good. Yeah. Um, I think I had the, your critical hog I kept for about six months. Yeah. Uh, just a great yield, uh, which in Alaska means a lot because people up here pay for yield. They don't pay for product quality. So Unfortunately. Well, um, that's, that's kind of Yeah, a... and uh, to, to correct James, I won uh, Indica and um, and uh, James hybrid. James got a not, no way. Not Sativa. Um, that orange juice, it's kind of a, uh, it's a, it could go either way. It's got Sativa fan leaves on it. Um, but when I looked it up on seedfinder.eu, and for any of you who don't use that website, get on there. Um, it's a European site that you can track your parent, your, your P1s, your P2s, your parental generations, and see where your strain came from. And is they don't like, have, have, always have the newest stuff. Is but, that the pie um, chart? Is that, is that the one of the real pie chart you read? I like well, what you breeders are putting in my uh, in my in my medicine. So <laughs> yeah, is that the kind of pie charty one? They yeah. have they have something like that. Yeah, you can go on and on and on with those. Yeah, it just charts. keeps going in. Yeah, it so, looks like you're not. A yeah, well, and, and, yeah, and it's it, it's great because you know the OG Kush one is uh, you know unknown, and I listened to your guys OG Kush show, and it was pretty much what got me hooked on your show because I was blown away the entire time, and then I got an Instagram and I started talking to Bubba. Nice. Um, <clears throat> And uh, I, uh, hold on a second, I'm being call here, it's Okay, sorry. Um, so I got a hold of Bubba on Instagram and asked him about that, and he said, oh, we've already got people up in Alaska we're working with. And I was like, really, already? We got a year out, and we already got you California guys coming up here? Come on. So that's one complaint I have to the guys who, you know, all you pros out there who want to come to our industry is stay away. Um, <laughs> we've Alaska for the Alaskans. Yeah, it's, uh, we don't have, a, have, have a, a, this landlocked like Hawaii has, and um, people, you know, generally aren't aren't bringing new cuts up here. There's not a lot. There's basically no one breeds up here. Um, I'm one of a few. Um, the cup I won for hybrid was a hybrid I did from Gage Green's Berry Breath. Or I'm sorry, mine is Berry Breath. Uh, their Grateful Breath, which is OGKB times their cookie cut. They're not, yeah, they're cookie, OG KB cookies times their OG cut, um, which, Adam, I'm not sure if you're aware of. I don't know if I should spill the beans on this, but is your underdog OG. Um, did you know that? Did you know that uh, the, that particular company who uh, produced my orange juice got their uh, male OG from your underdog collection? No, no, I mean, I wouldn't, wouldn't doubt. Not surprised. Wouldn't, Not wouldn't surprise me, no. <laughs> no, so, so really, the, the ironic thing is here, getting to talk to you, is that your underdog OG is the grandparent of my orange juice, and it's the great-grandparent of my berry breast, because both of my projects, uh, or the, the product you bred off of, was uh, this grateful breast, which was OG KB cookies times your underdog OG selection from them. Right. That they call Joseph. I, I almost don't want to give the name away because I hate to tell ruin the story. Whoa, whoa, whoa! The Joseph OG is the underdog OG. Yep, I, I wow. hope I'm not ruining it for anybody because Gage, Gage Green's been very good to me. They've sent me hundreds and hundreds of dollars of testers, and uh, I have an email to verify it. I don't know if I should be telling anybody. Uh, I guess they are on the radio, so the word's out. But yeah, words they, they went out. through a, a pack of your underdog, yeah. and they found Joseph OG, and. Oh. Uh, They've been uh, working off your good efforts ever since. Well, um, that's kind of part of the game nothing, anyway. They've, it's how it, they've how it that, that plant has gone wrong. Nice. Um, I mean, they, they grow a lot of good stuff that I've enjoyed with uh, underdog with with their Joseph OG. So, so, so you've got you've got genetics in both my plants. Um, my uh, what I did originally was I, had, I got a blackberry, uh, local blackberry, I think from the blueberry project from DJ Short. Um, I'm not sure about that kind of a guess those fruit strains are in Oregon which, so I went to one? Oregon and I got this blackberry strain and it was just the best pot I'd ever seen and my friends were growing it down there and they were all growing the same cut and uh, I, I brought it back with me to Alaska I'm not going to say how because of legal reasons <laughs> um, but it got back here somehow and uh, after three days without seeing any light um, and uh, it got it got put in a uh, some cubes and rooted and um i thought since it was so good i wanted to preserve it and i threw some pollen on it just a regular old pollen checker from a goji og from uh bodhi seeds and um ended up with uh blackberry og then i did an open pollination with 17 other strains from oregon i just i went nuts i went down there last year and um i went crazy and 
uh, got a bunch of cuts, and this was these, these two. That one was, turned out pretty well. So I hope I guess the next cut I do will uh, be uh, good, and I can win an award for that too. I don't know. We'll see. I at least had a good parent, and uh, thank you, um, Adam, for producing such a good underdog OG. And um, if I have an MCF story for you, if you want it, but I think my time I'm almost out of time. Uh, I'm going to tell the MCF story, and then I'm going to get the phone back to James. Yeah, do okay. it, do it, do it. MCF. Well, I'm, tell, tell later. I'm going to tell later. Okay, here's, here's, here's James back. <laughs> I got time schedule. I got time schedule. All right, so I got to give a shout-out real quick to the Father Labs. I got to gas in my seeds, THC seeds, of course. Uh, I just added Mosca seeds. Um, of course, they've got that skinny 99 male that they're working with. Uh, Best Coast Genetics, Exotic Genetics. Um, shout out to Tanner from AU uh, with, he, with his awards at High Times and Exotic for the what I can only describe as Coke like uh, dry sifts. Um, it was phenomenal. Only uh, Cali, describe it. Uh, is that the only way, is that the <laughs> only way you could describe it? No the other way, way to describe, describe it. Could have said meth. Could have said meth. Could have said uh, meth. Uh, it's very meth-like. Coke like. Very meth like, Coke like. Well, was it not very Coke like to you guys? I mean, I've never seen the product, of course, only on TV, but it looked like for like. Coke would look like, and I don't know. Like, like baking <laughs> soda, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. like baking soda. I don't know. Uh, shout out to Tanner, of course, with his propane uh, over at AU. Um, you know, I'm a propane queen. So right now I'm going to put you on the horn with uh, Justin at Green Green, um, Green Green Farms. Uh, here you go. Hey, what's up, guys? How's it going, Justin? Hey, Justin, what's going down? Oh, pretty pretty good. Uh, first time on the show, and uh, I just got got to say I've been listening for a little bit here, and it's a pretty good show. Thanks, awesome, man. thanks, man. Uh, pretty excited to be on. <laughs> awesome, thank you. So, tell us about your entry that you won with. So uh, I won with uh, Tangerine Diesel. Uh, Tangerine Diesel was um, I took a them from uh, <laughs> let's see here that came from Reserva Provada. Their uh, Tangy. And uh, I took a mail from, I believe that was Reefer Man Sour Diesel, and I bred those two together, and uh, that's actually the cup. That's what won up here. They, they, they love that tangy taste, and it followed up with that diesel, and it just uh, freaked them out, I guess. <laughs> they said they loved it. Nice. How long have you been growing that? Um, in Alaska, let's see here, about 10 years. Um, How about that one? I here about that long, but uh, I'm actually a southern Idaho boy and uh, was growing down there in corn, cornfields for uh, quite some time before we moved to Alaska. So, nice. Um, but a uh, huge fan of uh, TH seeds, got to say, uh, love uh, Sage and Sour, love Critical Hog, uh, love the Dark Star. Uh, nice. It rocks. Good, good, good stuff there. Sweet, sweet. Good to hear there's all uh, so, some things up there at least, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That sounds like people d- there's a few people there. really digging you up in Alaska. You should go I, up I need to get dude. up there. I need to get up there for sure. No, I was gonna go on this trip with uh James, that was my original plan, but it kinda came up real quick, so next time for sure. It sounds like a, it was the only it was the only cup that didn't get hassled this time, so it was perfect. Too cold polar bears. <laughs> Cops <laughs> hate polar bears. Definitely. Yeah. It actually worked out really well. Uh, um, actually, a couple of seed companies actually got hassled by the event center, and the uh, the chief of police actually came in and said, "No, they can sell their seeds; they're all good." So it was uh, nice it was actually uh, quite a different scene than what uh, you guys were talking about in Nevada. <laughs> Alaska, nice, nice to hear, nice to hear. Right on. Oh. Well, uh, anything else you want to include? Share with our audience uh, anything. I- I think that's about all I had. Just uh, kind of wanted to say, uh, give a word out for Alaska, and hopefully uh, we keep doing it right. Yeah, right on. We definitely want to, I think, try some of that, that Tangy Diesel. Sounds good. Sounds nice. Sounds nice. Yeah, we'll, we'll come up. You guys will always be welcome here. <laughs> nice. No, we'll be up there. We'll be up there for sure. We're doing Alaska event for sure. Just because yeah. that's never, you know, I love new places they haven't been to. It's like, and it's, Alaska's one of those spots because polar bears. Everyone always has preconceptions <laughs> of everything. Cool. Thank right, you very right. much. Well, well, thanks for well, co- cool. thanks well, for checking thank in. Thank you guys for having me on the show. Yep. Right on. Thank you. Oh, bike killing it from the bottle oh. back there. Two liters. Two sprite liters hit him sprite. behind well, the screen. Also, want to shout out real quick to uh, Duck House. Uh, excuse, excuse me. Doghouse. Doghouse. Duck, <laughs> Duck House. 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 Duck Dark Horse Genetic. Hey, never heard of them. Go. Never heard of them. Never heard of them. I've got both winners that are requesting uh, some banner packs of the King Banner. I know Jason's in the house. 
Uh, Jason's everywhere, so I'm surprised he's anywhere right now. There's, uh, can't we can't hear you either. Those. It's true. Uh, we're also looking, we're waiting for a phone call from coming in from the first place for Kiva. Uh, he'll be coming in, uh, calling. And then, uh, so if that call comes in on Skype, that's him. Um, cool. That's Brandon, the Alaskan grower uh, with a Bodhi Seed uh, ATF cut, which I was like, oh, that's nice. But right now, I'm going to put you on the phone with Evan and tell them he's going to tell you a little bit about his uh, eight, or NTF story. But if uh, the phone rings, coming in from Skype, that's the other guy. Right. Cool. Sounds good. And I talk a lot, so if you need to jump in and ask a question, just do it. Um, as you noticed, when I got on the phone there, I just kind of went with it. So uh, when Brandon calls in, shut me up. Or if I get out of line or you got a question, shut me up. Um, so the real MTF story, I wrote you guys I wrote you guys an email when I heard you were doing your Alaska show. And um, I don't know if you just didn't read it or if it was too late, you know, or something like that. But I said, whoa, 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 you guys are going to be doing the MTF story. Um, let me send you some info on this. And I wrote a little a couple paragraphs. And the message was probably too long. But I don't um, know. Sometimes it gets lost in the spam. We may not have seen that. Tell, tell me more. Yeah, it was, it was just it was to your info at the Adam Dunn. Yeah, show sometimes dot, that stuff gets know, spam com. boxed. It doesn't know. Um, it's pretty dumb. So sometimes we'll okay. go through the spam box and find old gems. But but I, yeah, I we found some me. good ones very late at night. When yeah, it comes but, to, what but the I don't hell? know that this one may have slipped through the radar. So this NTF thing, um, I, I grew up here. I've been here since '82. I know a lot of old timers up here, and they've grown a lot of strains that are Northern Lights based strains, um, or that have uh, their roots in maybe an early skunk. Um, you know, when HID lights came out, uh, everybody started going indoors in the 80s because you, you couldn't grow up here out, outdoor. Uh, people would do a light dip where they'd, they'd do a pl- plant or two outdoors on like a uh, truck bed thing, or not a truck bed, but like a pull, you know, pull your four-wheeler out of, of the barn, pull it back in, you know, kind of do light dip thing for, a, for an outdoor grow. Um, but... Um, the MTF was specifically when weed first got frosty up here and it started coming out of the valley. And so we've got the pipeline coming up here and there's millions and millions of dollars pouring in and there's more money for drugs and girls and whatever you want. If you got a job on the slope and you're getting paid, you know, who God knows how much an hour or a week, you know, for working full time. These guys would all go up work for two weeks and they all come back and they blow all their money. So they had money for the, the nicest pot around. And the nicest pot around was someone had taken this Northern Lights cut and they'd probably crossed it with a skunk or crossed it with something and they put frost on it. And out of this this frosted cut that was in the valley, there were four or five sisters or something like that. And so pretty much it was just that any time someone was getting really good weed out of the valley, they were just calling it MTF. Just like you guys were talking about that Kush bud when you did your OG Kush episode. I was like, oh, my God, that's the same thing. You know, the, the chronic, the crippy, the, uh, you know, the, it was that, it was the kryptonite. I mean, it was just, it, it was just a good weed. It was the MTF. Um, and it just so happened to be that the valley is the cultivation area, as you guys mentioned in your last uh, episode. And um, it's uh, got, it's a great place. Everybody's got a lot of space from each other. It's a great place to grow, um, even, even indoors, uh, outdoors. We've got hundreds multi hundred pound pumpkins and um, cabbages uh, out in the valley but also there's a really great group of uh, cannabis growers who've been doing it for the last 30 years and um, once they were figured out how to put frost on the flower they started getting uh, some uh, they started to be calling MTF um, but if you grab any random cut up here and there's a lot of bad ones there's tons of bad genetics up here which is why I started breeding because I saw there were nicer plants out there and I said what the shit am I growing this stuff for um, so I find a nice plant, and so I started buying seeds about five years ago, um, some THC, super size, um, <laughs> and uh, doing some of my own stuff. And my friends all of a sudden thought I was the best grower in the world because I just had the, the, new, the new stuff. I had, I, I had trichomes. Alaska hasn't had trichomes uh, really in, until the last five years people bought, started buying seeds. That sounds terrible. So NTF, from what I know from people in the valley and from the old-timers, is it's pretty much just that chronic. It's that good weed that was coming in from the valley. And so they said, oh, is, 